Everything in readiness then. About 24,000 people are at Croke Park. Hurling's two most successful counties are set to vie for a place in the 2021 final, which will be handled by Fergal Horgan from Knocker Villa Kickhams in County Tipperary. Cork won the toss. They're playing from right to left in the first half. Referee just checking, and behind his back, a little bit of how's your father's going on. Referee will want to get it underway pretty quickly. The lines were coming into hell, Todd or Dwyer. It's tense as you would anticipate and expect. So eventually, off we go. And emerging with the first possession is Adrian Muller, the man we were talking about just a moment ago. On his hands and knees, picking it up was Luke Mead. Finally into the hands of John Donnelly, sent to half forward, but dispossessed immediately. Onto it comes Mark Coleman, gives it off as far as Jer Mellerick, the East Cork man, spooning it forward there. Just about gets forward sufficiently to Shane Barrett, first touch for the youngster, a Cork under 20 player. Once again picked up by Jer Mellerick, storming forward Dara Fitzgibbon, 45 metres out, left the ball behind. Farley Walsh is able to pick it up, crashes in towards Mead. Pursued there by Conor Cahalan, hand passed the way out to his left hand side. Michael Carey's over there, slipping and sliding. It's an untidy start. Alan Murphy getting there, getting away from his man as well. The referee has blown his whistle, going to bring the play back, and it's going to be a free. Yeah, it's exactly the start we'd expect to even right from the throw in. You see, in the far side, Carey just held back there. They came up along the line then to the Cody. You can see the arm just over the top of the shoulder. But for ease and fairness, Brian Hogan had been very consistent, Fergal Hogan had been very consistent, and I think just above the shoulder is going to be a free first opportunity for TJ. TJ, of course, who played in the last meeting of these teams, which was a quarter-final match in 2019. He got 10 points that day. All of them were from freeze. He's looking for a bright start here. Very little breeze around to uh, trouble him in any way. Giving himself every opportunity. Low trajectory as per usual, but that deadly accuracy that is his trademark. Kilkenny off to a flyer. The defence has been warned, Jerk, his two best free takers of the country here today, so any discretion will be punished. Patrick Collins, pass they call him, the goalkeeper, getting it back from Rob Downey. Now the 24-year-old court base guard uh, drives it a long, long distance of the court player on the ground. It's Patrick Horgan, referee saw it. It's got to be a free in. Straight away indicting Hugh Lawler. Yeah, Hugh Lawler. Horgan just seemed to get the, the jump on him. Hugh Lawler, the referee, a judge, was just a bit of tugging there. You can see Fergal Horgan indicating. Well, nice. let's hope it's not a match, Brenda, which is going to be dominated by the two free takers, as you mentioned. They are among the best in the business. Patrick Horgan, this is a nice, handy one for him. Just outside the 20 metre line, and teams are level. This is what happened here again. You can see it just up there. Horgan on his hands and knees, having been dragged back by Hugh Lawler. Owen Murphy with the puck out for Kilkenny, right down through the centre to TJ. Picked up here by Connor Fogarty, released outside as far as John Donnelly. Donnelly strikes, and Donnelly has put this one the wrong side of the post. First wide of the match. Well, it was a straightforward opportunity that time for John Donnelly to take. Cork's puck outs have been the subject of much debate all season. That was inch perfect into the hands of Mark Coleman, back as far as Niall O'Leary. And there's a completely unmarked player here. It's Luke Mead, carries it forward, looks at the target, and hits it the wrong side of the left hand upright. Early chance again. Luke Mead did really, really well. He just ghosted back inside the Kikenia defence. And he needs to be taught in those ones. Owen oh, Murphy playing in his 41st ever championship match, goes straight down through the centre, TJ Reid is once again going to be his target, catches it splendidly, looking to release it now. Owen Cody going back, wearing those blue boots of his, back to TJ, TJ Reid again, and then dropped in and dropped over the crossbar, nicely done. It's Richie Reid who gets his opening point, and Kilkenny lead by two points to one. You can see the tussle there between Jerry Mellerick and TJ Reid. Mellerick has picked up Reid, he's Cork's main man from Man Mark, and we saw him against Sutcliffe against Dublin. Different kettle of fish. 
and Cork lose their first puck out and may well be punished. Alan Murphy dropping it back in there, but again missing the target. That's a second wide now by Kilkenny. Relatively straightforward a shot you would have thought for him. Yeah, again, he hit it very high. There is a kind of a swirling breeze down there, all right. It'll take him a, a little bit to get used to it. That's much, much better. All the way into the hands of Seamus Harnady. Harnady releases it inside Barrett, trying to make headway, surrounded immediately by Kilkenny backs. Back as far as Owen Murphy, able to easily pick out Adrian Mullen, the team captain. Off his left hand side, into the inside forwards it goes towards Cody. Breaks it down to himself. Nicely done, taking on O'Donoghue. And Cody making absolute certainty with this one, up and over the bar. Good point for Owen Cody. And Kilkenny stretch their lead out to three points to one. Great skill from Owen Cody to break it down to himself, but it all came from Richie Reid, tracking back. He caught Shane Bennett inside and got that turnover. Allowed that opportunity for Owen Cody. Back once again to the goalkeeper, Patrick Collins. They need to try and make their minds of how they approach the puck outs in this, because Kilkenny are pushing up immediately. And there is uncertainty straight away with those Cork restarts. Back it comes again towards Porrick Walsh this time. Up into the air. Perfectly delivered this time. Beautiful shot by Porrick Walsh playing in his 40th championship game. And Kilkenny are three in front. Yeah, great use of the ball again. Porrick Walsh now knows the breeze is blowing from right to left into that goal. And that's the result. This puck out goes away over towards the far sideline. It's still in play. John Donnelly. Again, quickly forward here. Billy Ryan goes chasing, but he won't get that one. Third wide already by Kilkenny, but they are the dominant force already in this match. They haven't they decided as well. They're going to test Rob Downey along the ground first. Billy Ryan has gone in on him, so they'll see what Rob Downey's legs are like before TJ goes in. Collins again going out, this time towards Tim O'Mahony. Got that brilliant goal against Dublin in the last round, but that goes short and it's missed again. It's broken up. Alan Murphy in here as far as Adrian Mullen feeding it forward into space anticipating a run there by Cody didn't materialise it's Mark Coleman instead out by Collins held on to this time by Sean O'Donoghue Mellorick chance to look up and place this one which he duly does down into the corner but there's nobody in the corner forward spot for Cork instead it's an easy by Porrick Walsh playing it forward as far as Paddy Deegan able to get it back towards the number six again and then delivering it long towards Billy Ryan missing it this time Mark Coleman sweeping as far as Connor Cahalan towards Mead couldn't take it but uh, Robbie O'Flynn can and O'Flynn ready to run at the Kilkenny defence which is probably going to be one of their tactics today and he scores his speed, speed, Robbie O'Flynn, the very minute he gets it, he's very direct, you see him there, he's been tracked by the Kilkenny defenders, just gets enough room, but again, it was Luke Mead who was in over the top, but no one marking him, standing in the Kilkenny number six spot. Cork surrender the puck out to Kilkenny, Tommy Walsh able to place it, batted back down by O'Leary, coming onto it there was John Donnelly, helped out here by Alan Murphy, slings it over his shoulder, and uh, manages to sling it over the crossbar as well. And he's on the score sheet, so every one of the inside forwards for Kilkenny has already scored. Yeah, great score there. The amount of Kilkenny inside forwards who flooded onto that break. They were fighting over who was going to get it. And to Alan Murphy's a great score. Mark Coleman from that puck out. Tim O'Mahony. Back to the Blarney player again. Jer Mellorick now. Good play by Mellorick. Good movement by Tim O'Mahony if he can get to it, but he can't because Richie Reid was coming across and made absolutely sure, certain that uh, Tim O'Mahony wasn't going to be able to make immediate progress. Good work by Kilkenny. Line ball to Cork coming up. O'Mahony himself will be the one to take it. Score that uh, much acclaimed goal last week. Starting on the left flank this Sunday afternoon. Up into the air, drifting, however, and going the wrong side of the upright. Two rides already by Cork. Kilkenny with the early advantages. They have settled down much better in the opening nine minutes. This is towards Cody again. Runs beyond him, however, to Billy Ryan. Back to TJ Reid. TJ Reid breezing in here, causing all kinds of problems. And it's got to be a free out, and the referee says he took too many steps. 
and Kilkenny fans wondering. Yeah, the defended that really, really well when they got back in. They knew Chiji might want to try to get on. There's the Coleman was in there, Fitzgibbon, the midfielder, and they just bottled him up. I think Cork fans were fearing a penalty was going to be the outcome of all of that. Free out instead. Tommy Walsh now back here as far as Porrick Walsh, his cousin, of course. Owen Murphy. His brother in the inside forward line is the recipient of this one. Here he is, Alan Murphy. They're taking the Cork defence apart early on here, having to stand firm, and it's uh, Sean O'Donoghue who comes across. Shows his pace, shows his timing, gets that ball away quickly. Down towards Jack O'Connor, his first touch. Ball comes back to Adrian Mullen, however. Nicely into the hands of Owen Cody. Cody looks up at the target. There was no immediate yeah. pressure coming on him from Rob Downey, and he was able to plant it between the uprights, and it's his second point. Not surprised from Owen Cody. He's had a sub here. Just catches it, stands up his man, and off the back foot then floats it about two or three yards right of the post, and in she comes. It's a great score. 6-2, Kilkenny leading. Cork with their short puck out to Mellorick. Back to Collins. Trying to work their way out of this 45 meter situation. Coleman playing it down. Picked up here well by Shane Barrett. Getting his hands on the ball for the second time. Very promising young player. Fouled. Free to Cork. Chance for Patrick Horgan to come out perhaps and try and get a third point for them. Yeah, Barrett did really well there. He's breaking through. Very hard to, to stop him. It's just a tangle of legs. But it's that transition, Jar, from the Cork 65 to the Kilkenny 65. It's where Cork had their stumbling block at the moment. They need to get the runners out there and get turned on him. They've struggled in the last 11 minutes or so to get it inside to the shooters like Patrick Horgan inside. Problems for Kieran Kingston and the management team to address. Patrick Horgan with his second free of the game. This much, much, well, much further out, but uh, same result. One Cork has needed, so 6-3. 11 and a half minutes into the match. Owen Murphy from Glenmore. Cork the ball pushed up now as well, Ger. Change of tactics, as you suggest, Brendan. But Kilkenny able to go long towards TJ Reid again. Breaks down this time. Mellorick able to get to it. Helped out here by Dara Fitzgibbon. And the referee saw a foul there, so it's got to be a free from where the ball has which is approximately 45 metres out. Big pull on the jersey. Jerry Logan is eyes in the back of his head here today. Jerry spotting all of these top right of the screen. There's the little pull. Fergal had actually turned and, and spotted it on Paddy Deegan. Fergal Horgan, of course, twice in All-Ireland final referee, so highly rated. So once again, it is going to be uh, Patrick Horgan who will step up to take this. There was mention of the 3-10 that he scored the last time the teams met. 2-2 of that was from open play. Here's another one coming up. And a third point for Horgan. There's so the gap is now down to two. It is, and there's a message there as well for Cork. Get the ball to your own 65 and just put it into the space and see what happens and let the runners inside go onto it. Kilkenny go long with their puck out towards Owen Reid, well anticipated there by O'Donoghue, and it went off the Kilkenny player last. They're asking a question or two of the linesman over there, but it's going to be uh, a line ball for Cork. Standing over it is Mark Coleman. Left half back when they met last in the quarterfinals in 2019. He would have had Mark Ellis and Stephen McDonnell alongside him in that line. So Coleman takes, really well delivered, but to the loose man back there who is Porrick Walsh, able to mop it up, easily able to pick out Adrian Mullen. Looking for Billy Ryan, comes away, however, from Rob Downey, who's settling down a little bit more in this match. As far as Seamus Harnady, I haven't seen too much of him so far. O'Mahony goes forward, oh, the challenge was coming out there. You had uh, Paddy Deegan and Shane Barrett coming one way, and O'Mahony went down. He was at the receiving end, however. Be interesting to see here now with the, the replay. Fergal Horgan has only had one glimpse of this. We'll see his linesman is in. They're wondering if a high hurl from Paddy Deegan is the, is the issue. First to Paddy Deegan, he's coming out behind Barrett. He's trying to flick the ball away. I don't think he was doing anything there to do any harm to Tim Mahoney. Just caught him just loosely. So the book out and the card issued, card. and it's Paddy yeah. Deegan who gets it. 
It's a game of fine margin, Joe. I know the Cox of Oars are bowing there, but Paddy Deegan was putting in the hurley, try to flick it away, and it wasn't a high. It just seemed to have caught to Manny around the chest there. You can see it coming in. He just flicks it, and he tried to... Everything's moving so fast. Just caught him with the nose of the hurley into the chest board. All of which leaves Tim O'Mahony still requiring some attention from Cork's medical team, Declan O'Sullivan, the physio, and uh, Dr. Colin Murphy. Also leaves Paddy Deacon now with an issue because he's already got caught in yards of space, pulling the jersey. One more tug of a jersey here, and he could see a second yellow. So it's very early, 15 minutes in to be on two yellows, especially with the paces and these inside forward lines. So it'll be Patrick Horgan to take this one. Breeze has whipped up a little bit in the last few minutes here, swirling around. This to make it a one-point game in the All-Ireland semi-final in front of about 24,000 people at Croke Park. He draws it in inside the right hand, upright, four for Horgan. Hasn't missed any so far. 6-5 the game. Slowly but surely now Joe Cocker after getting a, a foothold back into it. Owen Murphy drives it long. Breaks down here, a chance for Rob Downey to try and get that under control, keep it away from Michael Carey. Linking up with Mark Coleman, looking around, the challenge comes in late there from Adrian Muller, didn't reach him anyway. Walsh goes back, that's a brilliant take by Porig Walsh. He's sweeping at the back there. Getting it out here, as far as TJ Reid, look how far back he is, inside his own 45-metre line. Coming forward is James Maher, got three points in the last match, that ball intercepted, taken back here by Mark Coleman. Goalkeeper Patrick Collins. Downey now. Picked up by Conor Cahalan. His brother Damien is among the substitutes today. Niall O'Leary ready to take off past TJ Reid. Cork injecting pace into it now, a bit more direction, and the teams are level. And it's Niall O'Leary with only his second ever championship score. He scored against Dublin in the last match. He's come forward here now, and Cork have made a complete recovery from being well behind to drawing level in the 17th minute. This was some belt, Jared. This is the one they're in with Patrick Walsh at the moment. He got caught in the way down just with Patrick Horgan. Just a collision as much as anything. Patrick Horgan is down as well. They're, they were in with Patrick Walsh. I don't know how he got up after because he was in the air like that. It's just awkward, the collision, but... They're playing on. Jer Cunningham there, one of the selectors. Kilkenny come again. Connor Fogarty feeding it outside here as far as Tommy Walsh. And Tommy trying his luck. Keeping it in play is the Cork goalkeeper who comes from Ballon Hasek. Ooh, just about getting it nicely into the hands of Luke Mead. A little bit risky on occasions. Mark Coleman swinging it across here ambitiously towards Barrett, runs on instead. Horgan's completely recovered, gets away from his man, slings it up and over oh. the bar, and Cork lead in the game. That Five left, for Horgan. That left to right breeze in there, Horgan, like a golfer, he just floated it towards the left-hand post. It guided in. 18 minutes in, and the referee blows his whistle for the first of the water breaks. So Cork lead, it's Kilkenny six, Cork seven. Some recovery. Yeah, Cork have done really, really well there when they were down three, four points there in, in that quarter. Weren't getting their running game going, but they persisted. They kept trying to play the ball, moving it out, and uh, John O'Donnell pops up and gets a point for you from the opposition, 65. You know things are going fairly all right, so a couple of frees, a little bit of indiscipline from Kilkenny, giving Cork a little bit of a foothold, but Cork has certainly thundered into it again, and you'd expect a huge response from Kilkenny now again after this water break. Talk to us a little bit, Brendan, about the way in which both teams are handling the restarts, the puckouts, and so on. Yeah, well, Kilkenny have been happy pretty much to let Cork have it and let him try to work it out. Now, at the start, they were being turned over, and you'd expect that a little bit of, of jitters, but they certainly have found their feet. Kilkenny were trying to go long down on top of TJ, which they were having success with. Melrick has been doing quite well in him, but then they started to go to the wings, and they haven't had as much success on that. I think put more ball down on top of Mullen, I would expect, in this quarter to see can he get a foothold in the Cork half-back line. Kieran Kingston still having his uh, moment or so with his team. It's not just a water break, as we well know, it's a, a timeout. 
Brian Cody anxious to get his side back into the action as quickly as possible. He was down in Cork last weekend watching uh, one of the quarterfinals, and I'm sure he was probably in Thurles the same day, keeping an eye on would-be opponents. There's very little he doesn't know about Cork. Game restarts with Kilkenny, taking it from their own puck out. Paddy Deegan now, behind by a point, first time they've gone behind in the match. Dropped in there ambitiously. Again, Rob Downey dealing with that. Back to his goalkeeper, Patrick Collins. TJ Reid looked to have uh, knocked him over. Eventually the whistle goes and it's going to be a free out for Cork. Yeah, initially TJ must be the grab with the, the right hand because certainly Patrick Collins was dipping into the tackle. There must have been the little grab on his on his arm that Dougie Harden spotted. Sean O'Donoghue now. As far as Jared Mellorick, a player has overcome a lot of injury problems to get his place in this Cork team. As Anthony Daly was mentioning before the game, the back six and the goalkeeper pretty much picked themselves. Tim O'Mahony giving one forward here for Jack O'Connor, pace and all, and he's a very fast man, but he's beaten this time, and it's Paulie Walsh playing a good game. Into the centre here as far as Fogarty. Nicely forward, well collected. This is Billy Ryan, and here's a chance to tie it up once again. And Billy Ryan, with his first point of the match, makes it seven apiece. 19 minutes gone. What's the play with the sweeper, Jerry? As you give the opposition one as well, and probably wants it exceptionally well there to get across on Jack O'Connor. Unbelievable taste to cut it out and read it and set up the score. This is to Jack O'Connor. Came out, made it. Jersey pulled, keeps going. Then the second challenge comes in. No free given, however. James Maher, two against two over there, broken down, problems for Sean O'Donoghue to deal with, got it out sufficiently as far as Seamus Harnady, looking to exert a big influence in this game, been playing well in the last couple of matches, TJ Reid back there, pursued by O'Donoghue, played out as far as Paddy Deegan, trying to roll it up on the stick, gets it up cleverly eventually, Deegan looks for a support player, that support player is going to be Conor Fogarty, into the corner it comes. Change of direction, different approach. Billy Ryan scored the last one, trying to make an angle for himself. Down he's after him. Ryan gets away, and Ryan scores. Really good play by Billy Ryan, a man who came on in the 2019 All Ireland final on a day when it wasn't going terribly well for Kilkenny and did really well when he came on and got two points. He's got two here as well. So Kilkenny are looking for Jared, are trying to get him one on one. Rob Downey's done extremely well on the edge of square, but it's hard out in the wings with taste like that. Kilkenny back in front again. This time it's Dara Fitzgibbon racing forward, tries to get, he's lost his stick, across to help his uh, Paddy Deegan helping his other backs, trying to keep it in play over there was uh, John Donnelly, the referee's got to bring the play back, however. The, uh, Kilkenny ball. John Donnelly did extremely well there, I think he actually kept that in play. The room, the skill call in the back is fantastic skill. But again, you see Fitzgibbon in shot there, he's blown because two Kilkenny guys got him isolated out on the sideline. And they're able to get him a shot and turn him over. They need a, a big performance score from Dara Fitzgibbon. There's nobody marking James Maher. And Maher drives it, but drives it the wrong side of the post. Well, a player that comes from a family steeped in hurling, of course, James Maher. His uh, mother Gillian and his granddad, Pa Dillon, both All-Ireland winners, both with three medals. Sean O'Donoghue would love to get his hands on a first senior medal. Paul Cavett won the All-Ireland, as everybody pretty well knows at this stage, for some 16 years, an awful, awful long time, when you consider the history, the glorious history of Cork hurling. Kilkenny looking to win it for the first time in six. TJ Reid looking to get into the final against Limerick. Head by one. And what's he going to do with this one? He's going to go short and maybe take a return. Back it comes. Able to set up a chance here for Richie Reed has already scored, but he can't add to his uh, tally. And another one. That's a fifth wide already by Kilkenny. A little wasteful. Yeah, wide on the left again, Joe. The wind is blowing from right to left down there. Whatever way it's swirling, and it shouldn't go wide on that side. Now. Mark Coleman ready to advance yet again. Knocking it down, chance for Barrett to try and go chasing after it, Shane Barrett goes a second time, taken up well by Conor Fogarty, neat and tidy, to James Maher, the St. Lockdowns player from Freshford, 
This is Adrian Mullen. Looks across the field, sees two Kilkenny players over there in open space. Nobody whatsoever picking him up. Richie Reid has a support player should he have needed him. He goes for the score himself. He might well have played it out to his left hand side where John Donnelly was waiting. Always played to the guy in the better position, and Donnelly was the man inside. It's three now. Tim O'Mahony taking it back here from Coleman. Shrugs aside the first challenge of TJ Reid. And Cork get into a little maze there created by the Kilkenny half forwards looking to try and emerge with possession. Instead, it is Owen Cody who comes out here, pursued by Cahalan. On as far as Donnelly. John Donnelly transfers to TJ Reid, about to be challenged there by Robbie O'Flynn. And the referee saw the uh, challenge by O'Flynn, penalises him for it, free into Kilkenny. With all the half work, hard work done here, TJ planted his feet, very unusual. Knows the hook is coming. Right arm swing across the front of him, left hand just pulling back his left shoulder. And it's a free, and Robbie O'Flynn had the spare hand tackle again. And TJ knew the foul was there. At times, there is so little space in the congested middle third of this game. Here's TJ Reid, he's got uh, just one point at three already in the game. This is his 65th time to play in the championship for the Cats. Straight in front of goal. No difficulty whatsoever for a player of his class. So two between them. And the court goalkeeper summing up what's on. Opting to go long this time. Bit of variation. All the way over there towards Robbie O'Flynn. There against Michael Carey. Helped out Carey by Richie Reid. Forrick Walsh inevitably making himself available should he be required. O'Donoghue comes out, touches it down. Happy that there was a support player there to help him. It's Mark Coleman who's been hugely influential so far. Connor Cahalad running, picking it up now as Dara Fitzgibbon shortening the grip on the stick and firmly getting it over the crossbar. His opening point of the game, one between them. It's 9 8. Can Kenny still the leaders? Yeah, again, good patience by Cork. Patrick Horgan made a good run inside on Hugh Lawler, but they decided to recycle it. Got a runner through the middle. They're playing to their strengths there. Fascinating match. Anybody's game so far. Touchdown here. Alan Murphy unable to make any advances. Again, it is Mark Coleman. Tim O'Mahony now summing up just oh, where okay. to place this one. All the way down, it goes towards Horgan, bending his back. Pursued there by Hugh Lawler. Does enough to cause a bit of confusion. Gets support. Gets forward as far as Robbie O'Flynn. O'Flynn now raiding. Cleverly playing it inside here as far as Shane Barrett. Barrett coming in here. A couple of Kilkenny players alongside him, in front of him. It doesn't matter. A very tight angle and a very good point by Shane Barrett. And the teams are now level for the fourth time. They are all from Patrick Horgan taking the pass. You see Barrett, he gets to express himself here. Hurley held short off the back foot. Kilkenny's fuck out long down towards Alan Murphy. Takes it in well. Really good play by Murphy. Really good defensive work by Sean O'Donoghue. And then the help comes in from Tim O'Mahony. And they work it out cleverly as far as Connor Cahalan. Cahalan about to be hooked, but before he could be hooked, gets it down all the way to Patrick Horgan, looking to sling it over his shoulder and over the bar as well. Hugh it's Lord. almost telepathy, it's a sixth point by Patrick Horgan. Look at the space chair, I mean, Patrick Walsh on the right in the white helmet is supposed to be sweeping back there, Hugh Lawler is going to have to say to him, you need to come closer to me. That's the second time now there's been huge distance, quick puck out from Kilkenny. A very clever puck out by Kilkenny. James Maher again, this time James Maher is deadly accurate. And they're level again at ten points apiece, thanks to James Maher. It's a great score, Jerry, again, because he'd, uh, he had a wide, then he's off the back foot again. Just guided it lovely over the bar. Cork working it again. Five times they've been level in the game. Into the hands of Robbie O'Flynn, taken down. The challenge that time was by Porrick Walsh. Referee has a little note of that. Anymore, and he would be getting himself a, a little card. Free to Cork. Kieran Kingston has to be pleased with the way things are developing. Managing Cork expectations and a, a strong desire to bridge that 16-year gap since the last title. It is, isn't it? It's been the typical Ireland semi-final, really, you know. It has the ebbs and flows. One team goes a couple of points up, then the other team responds. And 
the contrast in styles from Cork get their running game going, they're really impressive. But Kilkenny can win their own ball. And they have to score from a bit of distance as well, so it's exactly what we thought it would be. Well, the distance confronting Patrick Horgan right now as he hits down towards the goal at Hill 16 is 85 metres. Well within his range, he's capable of most things, and he knows it, and the fans know it. And it's another for the Glen Rovers player as he eases Cork into a one-point lead once again. Seven minutes to go to half-time. Murphy with the puck out. Kilkenny made the brighter start in the opening ten minutes. But uh, Cork have come to the same pace and tempo as the Cats at this stage. This time it's Michael Carey raiding, looking to get a score here. It's a beauty by Michael Carey. He got two points in the last two matches coming on as sub. And, of course, DJ's son here able to level it up at 11 points apiece. Well, his dad played in 57 championship matches and scored 33 goals and 188 points. Cork looking for the next one. Robbie O'Flynn has a support player if he needs him. Look at the pace of the man. That time brilliantly dispossessed by Walsh. Comes back as far as Horgan and it flashes over the crossbar. Eight for Patrick Horgan, another for Cork. And it's now 11 points to 12. Well, he wants it really well to get back there. And again, Patrick Horgan back, backing him up and getting the score. But that's the frightening pace that Cork have when they cut down through the middle like that. Patrick Horgan with the last three points. Up it goes again, TJ Reid touching it on. Looking to be the big influence in this game. The referee has blown his whistle and uh, indicts Rob Downey this time. Dragged down, so it's got to be a free for TJ Reid. Chance to level it again. Yeah, it's better for Kilkenny if they can play the ball down top of TJ because Mellorick is marking him every time TJ comes to the half-forward half, back, half line. And TJ is that bit stronger in the air. It causes panic when the ball's around him. Cork backs taking no chance for them back there, including the goalkeeper, but he just pops it over. Third point by TJ Reid. TJ has to be rated among the uh, greatest ever to wear the black and amber of Kilkenny. Kind of wide open here. That time Porrick Walsh against two Cork men, anticipated, read it well, still holds on to it, great composure. Back as far as Adrian Mullen. Supported here by Richie Reid. Fires it back in towards TJ, his brother, who catches it and releases it inside. And it's Owen Cody looking for the goal of the game. Stopped. Well stopped by Patrick Collins. Should have been in the back of the cork net. Downey now there, forced out over the end line. Ball has gone out as well. The umpire has decided it's got to be a 65. It was a great save, but it should have been a first goal of the game for Kilkenny. It showed he possibly could have kept going in on it, but... It's a good save from Collins, he was straight down the throw down, but this is the battle we've been talking about at the edge of the square, TJ's cuteness, wins the clean possession, gets it inside, and the shot was straight down the middle. Well, it's a really exciting semi-final, and uh, it gives Kilkenny now this opportunity from the 65 of going back in front again with about four minutes of the opening half remaining. Well, when Jack O'Connor came out on that last puck out that Patrick Collins had, he was wide open, he just overcooked it slightly. If he could have got it, Kilkenny would have been bothered how quickly it turns. He took off a good save at the other end. So TJ will be hoping to play in the final and maybe win his eighth All-Ireland medal this year. Ready for this one? Again, the usual result, four for him. And Kilkenny steal back in front again by 13 points to 12. Brian Cody's 108th championship match in charge today. Collins pucking out, going long towards Seamus Harnady. Haven't seen very much of him in the opening half. Dropped that ball, surrounded by Kilkenny players, fed forward by Conor Fogarty. Taking off once again is the left half back, Michael Carey. Carey sniffing the ball inside. Cody had a goal chance earlier on, looking for another one, blocked, and eventually that ball has gone the wrong side of the post and a missed opportunity. It is, and the reason Cork were so wide open, Jerry, is they committed five players inside to Kilkenny's 45 on that puck out. It was a structured one, and unfortunately, Harrandy dropped it and didn't give him the chance to feed it in, so Cork were open, scrambled defence, got back. 
from the puck out, straight into the hands of Tim O'Mahony once again. Jer Mellerick now from the Fuller O'Neill's club in East Cork, down here as far as Shane Barrett. Got a great point earlier on, John Donnelly picking out Connor Fogarty. Swiftly forward again here towards TJ Reid, the number one target each time for Kilkenny in attack. That was well anticipated, and this is Adrian Mullen, and Mullen fires it inside the right-hand upright, and he gets on the score sheet as well. So now five of the six Kilkenny forwards have scored already in the game. They lead by two. He said a lot, Fogarty, to Reid. A pass back out to the next generation of Mullen, and a very good score. Adrian Mullen wasn't even born when uh, Brian Cody became the manager. O'Donoghue. Mark Coleman now. Having a go himself, well, there were clearly a lot of other options there. Just a third wide by Cork. Patrick Hogan's at right the edge of the square going mad. He was saying to Robbie O'Flynn, what are you doing in here? The same to Fitzgibbon, push out the pitch and leave me one-on-one -on -one inside. They crowded him. That's well collected here. Beautifully done by Billy Ryan from that long puck out. Now, how will it finish? Mullen pursued there vigorously by a couple of Cork players. Eventually, Rob Downey able to pick it up. Elegantly across as far as Jared Mellerick. Back out towards O'Mahony again. Mellerick back now. once more. Looking to get maybe the last score of this opening half in the 35th minute. That's a bit of wayward. Michael Carey able to come mop it up. He plays, of course, because Connor Brown is injured. Batted back out by Niall O'Leary, one of Cork's point scorers. Cahalad here trying to win his duel against uh, Connor Fogarty. Darryl Fitzgibbon setting up Niall O'Leary again here now. Deegan holding off him on a yellow card, remember. Inside towards Horgan, lovely pick up, beautifully done. And then the shot by Horgan, inch perfect. That's a ninth by Patrick Horgan. He's having some match, but his team is still a point behind. He is. He fancies that he wants to be one-on-one -on -one with Hugh Lauder. He's getting cross in there when the boys are coming in and they're, they're cramping his space. And he can do that outside the Hurley pickup. up Kenny on the road again now. James Maher. Two minutes of additional time now to be played. Billy Ryan again. The marker's just staying off him somewhat, and that's another by Billy Ryan. He's got a third. The Kilkenny fans are very, very pleased with the way some of their forwards are playing. There's a difficulty here and a problem for Jeremy Mellorek, I think it is. Yeah, he's struggling. He's trying that his, his hamstring could be the, the issue just after we struck the ball here. Oh, you can see he's him wincing in pain immediately. Yeah, his right hamstring. Owen Cadigan is the substitute coming in to replace him. But you saw David Rob Downey when he got out on the side there with Billy Ryan. He was caught under the Hogan stand. There was no way he was going to push up on him. And Billy made sure he, he made that distant count with a good score. Patrick Collins. His team two behind. Cahalan forced out. Then when he's forced back in, it's gifted to Richie Reid. More composure is coming from Kilkenny, if not exactly the finishing that they were looking for there. Yeah, that one didn't, didn't come back in. Parker on the go again in the space down the middle. Mark Coleman's had an awful lot of possessions in this match. Luke Mead on as far as Robbie O'Flynn. Once again going forward, this time hauled back by Paulick Walsh unceremoniously, and the referee issues a card to Walsh. So yeah. that's two of the Kilkenny backs now on yellow cards. Big message to the, the Cork half forwards, cut inside, especially Robbie O'Flynn. He's prepared to take that first wallop that you're going to get, Jared, to break the tackle, and then head straight for the black spot. Mr. Padraig Walsh just pulled him back. Well, this should put the minimum between the teams as we approach the halftime break. The message is clear, I'm sure. As we can all see if the Cork forwards get the possessions, they have scores. But up at the other end, Kilkenny have been causing a lot of problems of their own. Morgan with 10. 15 points to 14. This should be probably the last puck out of the game, or the first half anyway. Or Murphy trying to place it. The referee says keep going. So is there another 
scoring it before the half-time whistle. Down in his hands and knees was John Donnelly. The ball pops out here again towards Mark Coleman. Goalkeeper Park Collins coming to assist him. Sean O'Donoghue driving it down. Still a bit more time to play. But no longer blows the half-time whistle. An evenly contested opening half here. Little to choose between the two sides. Patrick Collins made one really good save. At the other end, Shane Barrett's got a, a really good point, but they've been depending on Patrick Horgan with his ten points. TJ Reid with four so far, Billy Ryan with three. At the break, it's Kilkenny lead by 15 points to 14, and we'll have analysis coming up. We're back right after this. Interesting that the piece we had looking back at the rivalries of Kilkenny and Cork back in the noughties started with the heading tit for tat because that absolutely sums up the first half here in this year's All Ireland semi final. Just a point in it at half time, Kilkenny leading Cork 15 points to 14. What was the standout from that back and forth, back and forth first half? Uh, yeah, it was, when it was 6 2, Joanne, you were saying, uh, like, are the cats now going to turn the screw? And you know, Cork found their feet in and came back at it. and it's amazing, actually, to think Kilkenny are a point ahead, but they've had a good few wides. I think they've had 24 shots and have only scored 15. And a couple of goal chances that have been in it, they've missed them as well. So they might feel they should be further ahead, but we've liked an awful lot of what we've seen from Cork when they let it in early in front of Hoggy, obviously, who's, who's on a going Damn. day. He certainly is. Eight wides for Kilkenny in that opening half alone. Patrick Horgan, he scored 3-10 here a couple of years ago in the quarterfinal. He's already got the 10 part of that. What sort of an influence is he having all over the place? And why is he ha being able to have that sort of influence? Yeah, he's having a huge influence, Joanne. I suppose the, 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 the space that's creating uh, for Cork, particularly in the second half, that first half, in the first half, Park Welch was having a huge influence on the game. But any time Park gets pulled out the field, there is these lovely pockets of space that are opening up and Patrick Horgan is just he's just mopping them up this is just Parik Welch doing what he does best great positioning and unbelievable under the high ball and his distribution is really good he's scored a point already but he's just reading it from just in front of the D and he has the athleticism and the pace and once this guy gets the ball he's a very good decision maker well able to carry the ball out but this is when he's at times he's getting too high you can see the space look how high he He's almost in the middle of the field, two lovely pockets of space, and this diagonal ball is a nightmare for the defender to, 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 to defend against. No better man than Pat Horgan, who was literally sitting in front of Owen Murphy, timing his run, waiting for Cork to build their attack. Once again, Park Welch, a little too high, exposing Hugh Lawler a bit too much inside. Lovely diagonal ball again. Patrick Horgan, he'll eat these up all day long, uh, Joanne, and his touch, and it's just a little swivel, it's only half a yard on you. Like, in fairness, you is doing as much as he possibly can, but he needs more support from his half back line, and particularly Park Welch. Anytime he sits in front of him, he's mopping that ball up, but he can't afford to be dragged out the field, and that's what Cork are trying to do and what they do to get success. They've got success, five different scores for Cork, one of those getting five from play in, in yeah. Patrick Horgan. There's been nine different scores for McKenney, and they did have a couple of opportunities to put the ball in the back of the net. They did, and while TJ is doing extremely well out the field, to me, he's causing real damage and danger inside. You can see in here, like, the ball is past him. He does what he does best. Now, we're lucky that it was Mark Coleman and Dara Fitz that were on him, two speedsters, as, as Dalo was saying. But Cork were really lucky here because I think that any time TJ's in and around the square, there's trouble for Cork. There absolutely is. And again, you can see it here. Wonderful catch. Like, I mean, the, we talked about the area of possession beforehand. What an awesome catch by TJ. And again, he pops it off to Owen Cody. Now, probably wasn't the best shot on goal. But it just shows that when Teed is inside there, he is causing trouble. Now, it, I suppose it's, you're robbing Peter to play Paul because he was getting a lot of ball inside that kick-in line. But I just think in the second half, I'd expect to see him more around the edge of the square. We spoke about that matchup beforehand and, and the potential. That's the only high ball they've contested, John. And like you saw the result. And I'm sure if you're Cody inside now, the lads are saying it to him, like, look, maybe he'd have his number in the air. Like, but uh, it hasn't materialised. But of course... As Anna said, he's doing a whole pile of work out the field and laying on ball, supporting players and linking the play. 
and they're a point up at half time and they, they take a point victory as well oh either side would take any sort of a victory oh it is so so close second half to come 15 14 in favor of the cats saying it's going to happen but I am just reminding you that it does go to extra time and penalties if it finishes all square. Kilkenny leading by a point at half time though and I mentioned that there were nine different scores for Kilkenny in that opening half. I mean that's an, an impressive spread is it not? Yeah Joanna they, they, they might be five or six ahead if they've been more accurate but there was some beautiful scores and Owen Cody maybe missed one one just before the interval but you know, playing, looking looking out for the ball and showing in front all the time. This fella has been a very, very good solid first half. Michael Carey getting up the field, came up again after that and pop, popped off the ball instead of scoring the point. And Billy Ryan here showing in front to Robert Downey and that's, you know, giving him the little bit of space. They're classy players, like they will. You keep giving them those chances, they'll nail more than what they did in the first half. And that's the worry from a Cork point of view. Um, and the goal chances, I think Cork will need a goal. And how close do you think they've looked? We've seen what's happened when they open up that space, but have they ever actually looked like getting in and going? Well, actually, Patrick Horgan, we were saying in around the 30 minute mark, he was actually on the, the edge of the big square. And I'm surprised he didn't go for the juggler then because there wasn't really that many people inside him. And given the strength of his shot, you might see um, Shane Kingston come on here now because a few times he would have been the ideal per person to sneak in behind Parag Welcher, Hugh Lawler, and actually bury a goal. Cork need a goal to me to, to lift the team because even though they're only a point behind, again, like Angie said, I mean, Kilkenny just put a few bad whites in that second quarter. But if you're hoggy in that dressing room there before they came out, they're out. You're saying, let it into me, lads. And we yeah. spoke about is it his last All Ireland semi final? No, the way he's hurling, it probably isn't. Like, he must be saying, get it into me. And Hugh Lawler has to be worried at yeah. this stage. And yeah. as well, he was telling Robbie Flynn and telling Derek, it's telling them all to push out and let him in one on one. We could see him down below here. He was very vocal about wanting to be in one on one. Jackie, Mossy Cohen is in for John Donnelly. Yeah, probably no surprise. Mossy Cohen, a surprise he wasn't starting. Um, you know, he'd bring a huge amount of industry there. He'll be stuck in everything, well able to chip up with a few scores. So it's just to freshen it up now. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Okay, straight back now to Brendan and Jer. Thank you, Joanne. Mossy Cohn coming in for his 13th championship outing. Game gets underway, one between them. Cork having it uh, to do. And as Cohn straight away gets possessed. TJ Reid, bright start by Kilkenny. Work down here towards Alan Murphy. Eventually getting it up. To Supported here by Adrian Mullen, back out towards the man who got three points in the first half. That's Billy Ryan, easy as you could possibly wish. Lovely relaxed style, and his fourth of the game, 16-14. Well worked by Kilkenny, moved it inside there. Ryan again, you see Downey, he can't get a, he can't get shoulder to shoulder because he's afraid he'd spin him. Billy Ryan is aware of that now, and he's taking his time. Another good score, well worked. From the puck out here by Cork, it comes to Dara Fitzgibbon. Work to do. Knocking it in here, straight at the goalkeeper, batted down here, helped out by Hugh Lawler. Pursued by Patrick Horgan, who got a hook on him and goes after him a second time. Lawler then with the presence of mind to flick it outside, but then it runs uh, kindly for Owen Cadigan, able to link up with Tim O'Mahony as far as Jack O'Connor, yet to really shine in this game. Ball hasn't been going in often enough anyway. Owen Murphy. Tommy Walsh now, off his left-hand side. That's straight to the cork sweeper, who is Mark Coleman. The two sweepers, Boric Welsh, Mark Coleman, dominated in the opening half. And this is Coleman driving it up and over the crossbar. Really good point by him, his 17th ever. He makes, he makes it a one-point game, 16-15. to 15. Be fair to Tommy Walsh in the far corner. It was a mishit, a mishit to the wrong guy there. Walsh stopped the middle and a good score. Hugh Lawler. Kilkenny doing what uh, Cork were doing in the opening 35, going short and then long from Owen Murphy's stick up towards his brother Alan. 
Anthony Ryan over there, and the referee saw the foul committed, so it's going to be a free in problem for Rob Downey. He went touch tight that time, Ger, on the break. He was afraid he couldn't stand off. He took a chance and decided I have to push up. And that's what happens then. Billy Ryan is able to, to spin him on the deck. No choice but to give him that little tuck back. And it'll be TJ Reid, the Kilkenny free taker, who will take it. Interesting that uh, TJ Reid and Patrick Horgan, they played in that first ever uh, championship semi final back in 2008. And uh, Horgan came on as a sub. Reid, I think, started. They both scored a point that day anyway. Been on the go a long time, the two of them. Both 30 years of age now. The angle is awkward, but. Uh, a little too awkward this time. Unusual. It was a tricky one to be fair to, to TJ. So that's a, a ninth wide now by Kilkenny. Patrick Collins after that let off up towards Harnady. He's the target. Touched it down. It's given on to it. Slings it over his shoulder. It's going the wrong side of the goal anyway, but the goalkeeper Owen Murphy able to come out, easily take it, play it away. As far as Connor Fogarty, and from Castle Comer all the way down, touched back out again by the court backs this time. But only as far as Adrian Mullen settles his feet, looks yeah. up at the target, and straight between the uprights. Really good score by Adrian Mullen. That's one in each half for him, and it's a two-point game again. It is both teams looking to get it, get it long inside again. And Mullen gets on it. He's allowed to plant his feet, which is Port and Luke Mead just inside him to give him that opportunity and he'll do that sometimes the marking uh, Brendan is quite slack in this game there's a bit of that in the chair but the fear they have is that if you create an overlap they'll get in and get a goal so maybe sometimes a point isn't the worst result Sean O'Donoghue now trying to launch this next attack skids beyond Shane Barrett has to go after it then Paddy Deegan gets there first Deegan showing a clean pair of heels back out again goalkeeper required on Murphy to relaunch the next attack down there over the head of Alan Murphy collected here by Mark Coleman then runs into some difficulty there's Mossy Cole number 22 on his hands and knees is Alan Murphy the referee blows his whistle and it'll be a free into Kilkenny and a chance for TJ Reid now to uh, put the next one over I to thank Richie as well Richie Reid that yellow helmet is buzzing around in there he's constantly trying to take the ball off of Cork players and succeed because he was the one that dispossessed Coleman to give this opportunity now as we mentioned on the scene set his uh, brother TJ Ritchie only played for much of the time as a sub goalkeeper in more recent years made his debut in 2017 and TJ wasn't going to miss the second one so first of the second half for him that's a fifth point in the wonderful Valley Hill Shamrocks player and now there are three between them. Short puck out to Mark Coleman. Owen Cadigan drops it, and that is enough to allow Kilkenny have play back. And Richie Reid, who we were mentioning a moment ago, able to link up with his midfield partner, Connor Fogarty, and he fumbles. A little uncertain before Luke Mead emerges with it, all the way across as far as Seamus Hardity. Really need to turn it on in the second half. Blocked down very well that time by James Maher. Wasn't going to give up on it. Fitzgibbon was coming in, but Kilkenny have it again, and it's Fogarty. Back here as far as Paddy Deegan. Observing what's on, seeing the run there of Alan Murphy. Tracked there by Niall O'Leary. And O'Leary made uh, contact with him, collided with him, and uh, down went the corner forward for Kilkenny. Yeah, O'Leary, see him coming across there. As Murphy hasn't held slightly, but to some extent, Alan Murphy there was almost pulling up the brakes, and uh, it was O'Leary collided in on top of him. Yeah, it is, and it's, I suppose it's called a good cute corner forward play. That when you feel the defender coming up, just slap on the brakes. He's going to come in the back. You see Fitzgibbon going off there, so it gives TJ this another opportunity to, to get four points between the teams. But he's on five so far this afternoon, one in the second half. All range of angles confronting him. And that is straight as you could wish. Perfection. A six point by TJ Reid. And it's Kilkenny 19, it's Cork 15. 
And Kilkenny trying to make a break in this vital third quarter where Kilkenny teams in the past, as we know, sometimes blow apart the opponents. From the puck out, it was Porrick Walsh who came out to attack it before Shane Kingston could get to it. Cork need to win a puck out now. They are like that, and he said it, it gives them possession inside the Kilkenny half of the pitch. They've tried to work it short in the last few. It hasn't worked, and typical Kilkenny, you know, there's four points between the teams now all of a sudden. The Corks will need a score to keep in touch here. Tim O'Mahony playing it in here as far as Robbie O'Flynn. Looking for the score, it's up into the air. Has it got the accuracy? Oh, it's yeah. got the white flag. It's one back by Cork, and Robbie O'Flynn second. And now it's 19-6. Running on the ground, he's threatening Cork, and then with a fantastic strike over the bar. That's unbelievable score from Robbie O'Flynn. Exactly what Cork would need it. Could be a very, very important point, that one, to bring it back to a three-pointer once again. Interesting substitution there, Shane Kingston, who would be very, very disappointed, I'm sure, to have been left out. A tough move for his dad as well, Kieran, the team manager, and then to withdraw Dara Fitzgibbon, who uh, only played uh, just a cameo role in last year's championship and hasn't really been at his very best in this. So it's a tough decision, had to be made, Cork have made it. And it's your bench, Ger your bench wins matches, Gerard, it's as simple as that, and in these close fought matches. That flies through the air, but it's going to be collected back there by James Maher. Good wing back play to Adrian Mullen. Decides to play it all the way back towards his goalkeeper, Owen Murphy. Nicely out as far as Tommy Walsh, unchallenged up to this point. Looks across, hits the diagonal. Too many court players are there, however, it's overly ambitious. Niall O'Leary up here as far as Jack O'Connor still looking to try and get going in this game and across there came Connor Fogarty they're putting in a huge effort once again the Cats yeah, Connor Fogarty pulled everything he had in the back there to get back after Jack O'Connor showed unbelievable willpower and pace to get across O'Connor whipping it up here one man inside there that man is Patrick Horgan but there are three Kilkenny players around him and they're able to work it forward here now through Hugh Lawler. Not the best passes by any means. Pretty poor, in fact. Luke Mead across here to Tim O'Mahony. Horgan coming deep to collect it. Back to O'Mahony again. Looking around. Seeing the run now made by Shane Kingston. Shane Barry couldn't win it. Instead, it's Paddy Deegan for Kilkenny into the hands of Porrick Walsh. Away by Hugh Lawler for Kilkenny, the number three. Cork players there, however, in numbers. Very quite fractured, a little sloppy at this stage in the contest. Mark Coleman, who got a very good point a few moments ago. This time, driving forward here is Robbie O'Flynn and routes over the sideline. He goes, TJ Reid, shoulder, but the referee says it wasn't a a fairly constructed one, so it's got to be a free into court. I don't think he had possession of the ball when the, the shoulder came in. We'll see it here. He fixes it up the line, and the ball oh, it looked perfectly fair to me. It looked okay. It looked okay, but it's an opportunity now for Patrick Horgan. To narrow the gap again. Ter Cunningham and uh, Dermot O'Sullivan there, along with the team manager Kieran Kingston, contemplating their next move, no doubt. Horgan will be the one who will take this. Now, can he make it? Up into the air, it's got the accuracy as well. First of the second half by him, and that's 11 for the day. And where it was four a little while ago, it's back to a two-point difference again, 46 minutes in. Owen Murphy driving it away downfield. Alan Cadigan is about to come into the contest. Connor Cahalan there looking to try and make a bigger impact. He's grounded anyway. TJ Reid was the one who fouled him. Yeah, he just came and he flicked the ball and as far as the follow too, then he's body connected with Cahalan. He goes in and he's got the, the flick away just gets tangled up in him. They're all Marshall calls Gerber the last couple have gone Cork's way. So Alan Cadigan comes on. 
The player going off is going to be Shane Barrett. Just wasn't his day. Still a Cork under 20 player. Mark Coleman taking this all the way across towards Kingston. Takes it into his hand. Stylishly delivers and puts it over. First touch, first point. It's a one-point game. Can't and the subs might be beginning to make a difference. Yeah, he can't beat fresh legs like that. He just left Torbic Walsh. See the concentration, watching the, the ball into his hand, then turns and sweeps it over the bar. And Kenny are long again. That's a great catch by Rob Downey. Got there ahead of Billy Ryan, who's gone into full forward for Kilkenny. Ooh, a little fumble here by the goalkeeper, leaving it for Adrian Mullen. Stopped on the line by Niall O'Leary. They should have got a goal there, Kilkenny. Poor goalkeeping by Patrick Collins, it has to be said, to leave the chance there for Kilkenny to take. A little too casual. Back come Cork, back comes Conor Cahalan. In there nicely. Trying to win this is Alan Cadigan. Cadigan has it. Trying to go forward past James Maher. Referee's whistle sounds. Chance of an equaliser coming up. Yeah, it was, and here's the goalkeeping error here. It came across the region like that. Thought he just tried to pass it into the net, but he should have harder. But remember here a couple of years ago when Patrick Horgan scored all that in the first 15 minutes of that game, Cork ran absolute riot. And the two guys who did it were the two that are in there now, Alan Cadigan and Patrick Horgan. They get one on one inside. They're going to cause havoc for this Kilkenny inside back line. Horgan's 12th. The teams are level for the eighth time. Cork were four behind. They've got the last four scores. And we're nearly on 49 minutes in this match. As you can see, it's nearly seven minutes now since Kilkenny's last point. Owen Murphy delivering the uh, puck out down. Well won again back there by Tim O'Mahony. Storming into the game even more. Harnedy now firing it forward towards Alan Callaghan. Released brilliantly to Jack O'Connor. Will this be his moment? It's O'Connor off the post. Comes back off the butt of the upright and back into play. Cork unlucky, they still have it. It's Kingston over the bar. Cork in front. Yeah, the Shane pace. Kingston with a second. Yeah, they're starting to run the ball. Lovely now, Cork. This is exactly what they want. Kenny will have to get a foothold. Takes it. At least he gets it. He does the right thing. He takes the point. I just wonder when O'Connor got inside here, was there a pass inside to his left? What a save. What a save from Owen Murphy. I think he got a hurley on that. I think you're right. He got a hurley on that, but if the ball went inside to Horgan from Jack O'Connor, there was no way that man was going to stop it. But it was what a save. Corker got the last five points. Kilkenny now need to respond immediately. Owen Cody. Referee blows his whistle. They'll have a free in. The chance to draw level. He's been stepping up for Kilkenny all year and seeing the fist go, and he's taking that leadership role, wins possession, hand in, the spare hand in again, coming across from Sean O'Donoghue. Just pulling him back. Kilkenny are making a switch now, and Richie Reid coming out. He's run himself into the ground. Killian Buckley's turn. Good sub to be able to bring. TJ Reid looking for his seventh. Should make it. And he does. No problems. So 20 points apiece. And what Joanne was saying earlier on there about the possibility. And there's Walter ready to come in. Possibility of extra time, it's still very much alive. Amazing. Last time Cork were here in a semi, of course, Brendan was 2018. That one went to extra time against Limerick. Jack O'Connor feeding it back inside. The hand pass from Luke Mead back towards O'Connor again, surrounded by three Kilkenny players, stolen away by Michael Carey. Back out as far as Porig Walsh, released from his centre back at sweeping row. Gets away from Kingston, diagonally across towards Billy Ryan. Two men against him, fumbles it. Ball comes back off Cahalan's stick. Cahalan working hard. Driven away out towards Robbie O'Flynn. O'Flynn trying to steal a march this time on James Maher. Maher wins it, however. Challenged. Comes forward strongly. This is Killian Buckley, his first contribution since coming on a few moments ago. Owen Cody neatly picking it up. Two points from the first half, Cody. This is up into the air, and that's over the bar. And Kilkenny are back in front. A 21 points to 20. Some match. With an individual battle, creates opportunity. James Maher won his battle. And played it up along the line to Killian Buckley. Got it into this guy. And he's all fired up again. He's unbelievably consistent, old Cody. And Big Walter is in now. 
and he will go in towards full forward there and provide a, a new option inside a big aerial presence and the player coming off is Alan Murphy I don't think we'll see much low ball going into Niall O'Leary's corner at left left corner forward right corner back with Walter in there so Kenny will go along Another couple of good options available inside there to Kilkenny as well. You've got James Bergen has been doing well when he comes on as a sub. And Richie Hogan is also a, a substitute today on his 33rd birthday. That's a good ball down. Once again, as far as Shane Kingston, he's popping up everywhere. He's got two points already. He's now got a third, and the teams are level for the tenth time. 21-21. Great All-Ireland semi-final. Yeah, kicks him really well here. Look at the composure he shows here. He doesn't panic. Gives a sidestep. Floats it over the bar. Now we have a water break. And everybody at the sus Ishka at this stage of the game. I've yet to see Kingston as fired up as he is down the line, Jared, to be honest. He knows there's a huge opportunity here. They're right in the heat of battle. He's tapping all of his players down there. You can see him keeping them all fired up. Hit Jack O'Connor a couple of shots there coming in. He didn't get him off of the kill. Kenny backs is hard, but he knows there's an opportunity. And in fairness to Cork, you know, they've come back into this. They were four down at one stage, looking like Kenny were slipping away. They got their running game going and come back into it. You know, both teams fighting blow for blow. Well, let's go down to the sideline and get a word now with our reporter, Marty Morrissey. This is uh, very much an intriguing contest, and uh, certainly uh, Brian Cody has only got animated in the last uh, couple of minutes or so, deeply concerned about the freedom that the uh, Cork forwards are getting. And the two substitutions, Alan Cadigan and Shane Kingston, have already made an impact, but it's the quality ball that's going in. When uh, Dermot O'Sullivan, The Rock, and Ger O'Sullivan was, Ger uh, Cunningham was called down to Kieran Kingston, it was to, to devise a plan so that the ball could be put in fast, and in front of Cadigan and Kingston, and that's more or less what he's been saying. While Brian Cody here in front of me is advising players, get the ball in high, in towards Walter Walsh, and TJ Reid, let it fly. I just see there that some of the messages I think that Kingston was given was to leave two inside, leave Patrick Horgan and Alec Cadigan inside in the penalty area. He's told the rest of them to push out the field, leave the two of them in there in their own, and Kilkenny will be doing something similar on the other side, trying to get Owen Cody and Walter Walsh on the ball inside with Billy Ryan buzzing around him as well. I see Rob Downey's after switching now. He's gone on to Walter Walsh to make sure the matchup is right. Well, it's a height for height. Two players who are about 6 2, 6 3. Limerick are watching. They're in the final. It's two weeks away. Owen Murphy drives the puck out down, batted out by Tim O'Mahony. Collected here by Seamus Harnady. And it goes into the two. Two against two inside. Hugh Lawler touches it down. But here's a raiding chance. Oh, and it's tapped over the. Oh, it's saved. It was uh, Alan Cadigan, thought he was going to get his point there. Owen Murphy able to take it down, left behind, however, to Horgan. Patrick Horgan comes back out here. Robbie O'Flynn calling for it again is Alan Cadigan. Goes back and then gives it away to TJ Reid. Not quite sure what he was seeing there. Out they come once more, the Cats. James Maher trying to break over there is Adrian Mullen, held up momentarily by Tim O'Mahony. Down it goes well by Sean O'Donoghue as far as Owen Cadigan spooned forward by Luke Mead taken in here by Jack O'Connor denied a goal opportunity a few moments ago he's got his point however Jack O'Connor's first point the 22 year old from Sarsfields in Glanmire makes it Cork 22, Kilkenny 21. In Paris he looked in to see where he ended and the two boys weren't so he said I'll have a goal, that's a great score Owen Murphy Kilkenny looking for the next score. It's down there on top of Rob Downey. Breaks it. Collected here by Billy Ryan. He's caused problems all the way through. And that's Connor Fogarty. And yeah. Fogarty's got his point as well. Only point of the match so far for him. That's Billy Ryan's job is to be buzzing around in there on the on the breaks. Seeing the background there, I hope he's he's okay. But this is the Save from Owen Murphy. He won't tap that over the ball there if he can avoid it. He doesn't give away a cheap point. Does really well there. Great reflexes. Great touch to take the ball down. And Frank like Cody issuing the orders as per usual. The really? game's most celebrated manager, Brendan. He'd be worried a bit about Billy Ryan there now. I don't know it's a cramp on his calf there. He's holding his head down there slightly. He's they need him to stay on the pitch now. Can Kenny do? He's been playing really, really well, and he'd work well underneath Walter there, and the, the bombs are dropping. 
fourth year playing at this level. Billy Riot, he's back on his feet, he's okay. He's in at full forward where his marker is Niall O'Leary. Patrick Collins goes short to his left hand side to Rob Downey of Glen Rovers. Ooh, it's not the greatest of balls to give, but he's given it into the hands of Owen Cadigan. All the way across as far as Sean O'Donoghue driving forward. 22 22. Quarter of an hour remaining if it's to be decided in normal time. Seamus Harnady. It's going to drop a bit short. It's towards Horgan up there with Hugh Lawler harmlessly out over the end line. First wide of the second half by Cork and their fourth in all. Quick punk out to Connor Fogarty of Kilkenny. Nobody on him, able to place this one. Down towards Billy Ryan. Ryan breaks it to himself, challenged by O'Leary there. And it breaks here, here's an opportunity, Killian Buckley going in, trying to play that ball into a colleague stolen instead, into the heart Coleman and Cork get away with it. Both sides living dangerously on occasions. Coming forward quickly is Michael Carey. Got a lovely point in the first half, looking to replicate that, but he's put it wide. And it's a tenth wide by Kilkenny, just their second of the second half. They read the ball up the line really well. Here's the goalie opportunity. Killing Buckley Walter was, it was great defending inside there by Sean O'Donoghue. He just stood his ground. Kieran, or, uh, Shane Kingston comes in here and he picks it up and he's got it and he swirls around. He's lost it. And Kilkenny are able to get that ball away out towards TJ Reid again. Now it's Killian Buckley down into space, reading this one was O'Donoghue who couldn't get to it, instead it falls kindly for Owen Cody over near the sideline, beats the attempted block, a near impossible angle, it's on the left-hand side of the post and wide. Parker Stays coming quickly now again, Parker came, trying to keep the tempo of the game high with opportunity here. Mark Coleman, now Luke Mead. Runs on nicely as far as Alan Cadigan stole a march on his man. It's Cadigan, it's still Cadigan. Well blocked by Porrick Walsh. Cadigan again, and he slips it over the bar. Great piece of play that time. Alan Cadigan's point, brilliant piece of defending by Porrick Walsh, however. Hugh Lawler, Hugh Lawler got it, and they closed up the ranks. They can see five. Kilkenny, look at Hugh Lawler, eyes on the ball. Nicky Quaid, like we'll call it. Cork will be hoping that's not their moment like it was in the semi-final a few years back. But again, it's the two inside Carson Hassel. They're staying in deep. Murphy's long puck out once again. Problems to be dealt with by the Cork backs. Walter Welsh coming forward. There too was Adrian Mullen. This time it goes towards the end line and O'Leary deals with it, but a line ball to Kilkenny coming up. And then over there is Sean Stack from Dublin. Weary looking players after 58 minutes of an All Ireland semi final. TJ Reid ready to step up and take this. Seven points, his contribution already. Will he go short? He's looking for his options. And that wasn't the option he was looking at. Jack O'Connor in the red of Cork, starting from a deep position, delivered. Two Kilkenny players there against one from Cork, Alan Cadigan. So they're able to take it here. Porrick Walsh, in as far as Paddy Deegan, challenged, challenged vigorously. Nothing given lightly by anybody right down, right now down there. Playing for a place in this year's All-Ireland final. Owen Cody trying to go past two defenders, stopped. Has to work his way out of it and loses it and it's taken up by Mead again, and he plays it forward to Conor Cahalan, the bars man, to his left-hand side. Once again, it's Kingston, Shane Kingston Timber. showing pace. Look at the man go, there's a point for the taking. Yep. It's over the bar, it's four for Kingston, the man who was left out of the team because there was a lot of pressure on, they were saying he wasn't playing well, but he's come on here to show people exactly what he's able to do, and he's put Cork two points in front. Shane Kingston will understand his job, Ter, to be fair, his job is come in and try to finish off this game, use your pace, we'll batter Kilkenny for as long as we can, then you come in and pick holes, and that's exactly what he's done, James Bergen has come in here now for, for Kilkenny. Yeah, he's replacing Mossy Cohn, who just didn't make any impact. Bergen is a player who can score, Kilkenny need to score pretty quickly. We've got just about 10 minutes of the 70 to go. Caught by two. Again, they go long and feed the forwards in there to Robbie O'Flynn. He's got two points. He's still going. O'Flynn touched, and that ball's gone over the bar. 
Okay. Alan Cadigan with another one. They're cutting serious holes in this Kilkenny defence now at the moment. Cadigan was just a little bit too high for him. But he still advanced to Robbie O'Flynn. He saw him and he gave him the pass. Big few moments now for Kilkenny to need to win this puck out. They need to show a response. Cork have certainly responded. Remember, there were four behind in the third quarter. Now three in front. Sean O'Donoghue. This is the best display they have given for quite some time. Now, will it be enough to see them into the All-Ireland Final against Limerick in two weeks' time? Tim O'Mahony. Still, Kenny can't cut it out. It's with Harnady. Chance to slot it over the bar, and he slings it up and over. It's his only point of the match so far. And the Cork fans, who predominant, predominate in a crowd of 24,000, are really loving every moment of this. Kilkenny are in bother. The two boys inside. Hogan and Cadigan are winning every ball. Cork have pushed up. Kingston is keeping. Padraig Walsh occupied, so he can't sweep. And the whole place is wide open. It's Luke Mead. It's Patrick Hogan to add to his 12 points. It's his 13th. Eight minutes to go. Cork lead the Cats by five. Yeah. Looking to try and reach an All-Ireland for the first time since 2013. Yeah, and that's what Kingston has done, really, along with all the runs he has made. He's kept Padraig Walsh occupied, which means he can't sit back on the edge of the D, which is left of the two boys inside. And Robbie O'Flynn now at the top of the triangle on the edge of the D. Kenny with just one point since the last water break. It's been all Cork. Harnady down there towards Robbie O'Flynn. Deegan's after him, can't catch him. O'Flynn tried to measure this one, I think it's gone the wrong side of the post, it has. Did Kenny need to get TJ Reid isolated somewhere out on the wing and one of those Cork defenders on a puck out? Eight minutes to go. James Maher. Down towards Walter Walsh, who hasn't made an impact since coming on, hasn't been allowed to because the Cork backs have tightened up considerably. Very few chances presented. Rob Downey. The goalkeeper, Patrick Collins, all the way across here to Mark Coleman, who's been exemplary. Into space, look at that for an inch pass, perfect pass as far as Kingston, and Shane Kingston drills it over. He's got a fifth, not bad for a man who wasn't playing the first half. <laughs> Cadigan was inside with Tommy Walsh. The two of them are all wrapped up. So, be interested to see what Fergal Horgan does here. Inside it. Mickey Butler want to be trusted umpires. It'll be interesting to see what they say. I think they might go for yellow card on Tommy Walsh in there. He was isolated on Cadigan. He was tugging him back, but in fairness, the ball ended up going, going inside to Kingston. He was the one who took the score. That's four yellow cards now against Kilkenny players. Three of them are among the six backs. Kilkenny in real difficulty. Only seven minutes of the 70 to go and they are six behind and it's all Cork but picked up here by Owen Cody can he yet make a difference or oh, this man the great wizard that he is TJ Reid nicely across Walter Walsh they need a go Walter's going for it well defended brilliantly done that time by Mark Coleman Gets a little clap on the back from his goalkeeper. He does. Initially, Tim O'Mahony did really well. It looked like he wasn't going to get to him. And look at Mahoney in there, and Coleman gets across then as the one. Tim O'Mahony was just holding him up, knowing Coleman was coming inside him. And then that's great partnership defending in there. 65 will be the outcome. There's a, a cramp problem for, I think it's Rob Downey. Play continues. TJ Reid looking to try and get one back, make it a five point game. The Kenny fans will hope that still anything is possible. They will, but if it's going to be possible, Jared, they're going to have to get TJ on the ball more often. I think every ball needs to be played through TJ. Whether it's puck outs or in general play, because you saw it there when he gets in his hand, he makes things happen. Brian Cody's been on the go a long time, 23 years. Lost his first All Ireland final to Cork back in 1999. Here he is, 23 years later, and uh, it's the All Ireland semi, and it's Cork again. O'Donoghue, collected here by Luke Mead. Coleman, it's precise, it's accurate. Cahalan, well blocked down that time by Michael Carey, who broke his hurley as well. He's got half a hurley. 
Great block. Kenny have a free. Can Kenny need loads of those little moments to go their way now? Little blocks like that just to change the momentum. Got a couple of frees for TJ. You can see him here, eyes on the ball, jumps as high as he can. Let's the block, her goes flying. So TJ Reid looking to try and knock this one over the crossbar with about five minutes to go and make it a very, very manageable four-point difference between the teams. Can he make it? He's 90 metres from the target. The jeers of Cork fans are ringing in his ears. He casts Ice. that aside. It's an absolutely brilliant free. Ice in his veins, sir. You know, you say it year in, year out. Just consistently a free taken. The Kenny are not gone away. We never thought they would be, to be honest. But we realise that a Kenny goal at this stage could change the complexion of the game absolutely completely. Four for six up. Tim O'Mahony. All the way down here towards Alan Cadogan. Got the run there on Tommy Walsh out near the sideline and that one has gone the wrong side of the upright yeah, he needs to take on Tommy Walsh in those cases and he gets him one-on-one -on -one like that he needs to turn in to remember he's on a yellow card six wides by Cork James Bergen is in trying to win it Cahalan does so well he's worked really hard the number 10 Connor Cahalan into space this one comes should be Hugh Lawlers able to get out ahead of Patrick Horgan Killian Buckley under pressure, too much pressure, he's thrown it away and Robbie O'Flynn has it, oh it's a poor ball, he was looking ahead of Jack O'Connor and never gave the pass to him, so Kilkenny get away with it, and we're in the 67th minute, and it's James Maher in this All-Ireland semi-final, runs down nicely for Owen Cody, taking on Coleman to his left-hand side, he's got to drop short, easy one for Patrick Collins to take, Tim O'Mahony once again, Big long delivery all the way up there, putting the pressure on the corner back who copes really well. Good play by Tommy Walsh of Kilkenny into space as far as Adrian Mullen, hoping to lead Kilkenny into this year's final. There's still a few minutes, there's still time, and he's got another one. It's a third point by Adrian Mullen, the captain. 28 25. It's not over yet. No, not by a long shot. No, see Robbie O'Flynn down below us there. I think is the one who's. He's limping off, but Kilkenny, like we always say, Jared, they just play consistently right to the finish, point for point for point. Damien Cahalan is the one who's going to come in and replace Robbie O'Flynn, different type of player. Depends where Damien plays, of course. He had been playing full back until he had a, an appendix operation just before the Clare match, so he was forced out of that, and Rob Downey came in to replace him. Patrick Collins here, the goalkeeper. Driving in a long, long distance. But again, it's won by Tommy Walsh. Into the hands here of Adrian Mullen. Looking to try and bridge the gap once again. Torek Welch. Killian Buckley able to take it down. Lob it forward here for Mullen, who let it run on. As far as Owen Cody. And Cody's close with another one. That's Two in a row for him, four in all. It's 28-26, and these Kilkenny fans are still believing it's possible, and it certainly is. They worked it really, really well, really well up the field. Composure, remember, we're in the 69th minute of the match. It's all on the line, the Ireland semi-final. Cork have another little blow here now, because Conor Cahalan is down injured. I think he's got a cramp, and uh, they're ready to bring in their number 25, who's Alan Connolly. Yeah, Conor Cahalan is, is out here, he's coming off, that's it. That ball flies forward here, about to be picked up by Patrick Horgan, 13 points in the match. Little block on it as it was uh, going towards the goal, and Owen Murphy is able to begin the counter-offensive down towards Bergen. Can't take it, very good play by Mark Coleman, he's been exceptional. To Seamus Harnady, looks around, sees a support player, it's Jack O'Connor. Cork needing a score to settle their nerves. Yeah. And O'Connor delivers, and it is now 29-26. Will that be enough as we're in the 70th minute and there'll be four minutes of additional time to play? Yeah, Cork had a good response there. Jack O'Connor, to be fair, just keeps the three points in it. There's still a long, long way to go here, Joe. So into the beginning of four minutes of added time, 
Pressure on the cork backs. TJ Reid's in there to try and create some difficulty for them. But instead, it's collected back there by Owen Cadigan. His goalkeeper is Patrick Collins. This is Sean O'Donoghue from Inescara. And I thought he's covering the long ball in, so that's why he can't deliver it. Still going. Driven in and driven wide as well. Uses up 30 seconds. It's been a feature there of the last four or five minutes. He's caught. Take off Donna Cahalan. But Conor Fawlty has tried to sit back in front of Horgan and Cadigan inside. So Alan Connolly comes on. Kilkenny have possession. Conor Fogarty driving it down. Well collected by Tim O'Mahony. Some great play by the Cork half back line. And that's a little too tasty for Patrick Horgan to take. Line ball to Kilkenny. They need to get a move on. Three minutes remaining. They're three behind. Is it to be Kil is uh, Limerick versus Cork in the final? Kilkenny. We hope that the next few minutes can change that possible scenario. Jack O'Connor leaving it. Here comes Connolly. The new man in. Hits it the wrong side of the post. Just right and wide. Not look at oh, Murphy is the space in front of Billy Ryan. Puckouts are hit really quickly. That time Rob Downey does well, getting out ahead of Billy Ryan. Luke Mead into space here but there was nothing that Connolly could do about it goalkeeper Owen Murphy Kilkenny three behind looking like a goal is the only thing that will save them at this stage it's a big moment there as well I expect every ball will have to stick Adrian Nolan just a little mishandling on his part and that's surprising too, John in a lot of ways. The amount of work that both teams have put in down there. You see Tim O'Mahony, a ball he'd normally put in front of Horgan. Just a bit of fatigue the same way with Mullen there. Well, we haven't heard the court chant around Croke Park for quite some time. But we're hearing it today. And Tim O'Mahony and the players will be hoping they'll be hearing it again in two weeks' time. And to throw it in. He could throw it in, he, he could will. indeed. Yep. Time wasting, the referee has decided. So now, what will happen as a result of it? Well, Tim O'Mahony decides to make amends and win it back himself. Give it into Alan Connolly. Connolly trying to win his duel here against Paddy Deegan. Deegan yeah. carried it out, and it's got to be a 65, and it's all playing neatly into Cork's hands at this stage. The seconds are ticking away. Kieran Kingston's team are within touching distance of the 2021 All-Ireland Hurling Final. A vital contribution there from Alan Connolly. When he got inside, he looked like he had lost possession, and then he won that 65. I think it was that Paddy Deegan in there. Small, small things like that get you across the line. If Patrick Horton can get this over the bar, it puts us to four points with just a minute and a bit left on the clock. There were times in the third quarter when it looked like Kilkenny were about to run away with it, building up a four-point lead. But Cork have come back, they've shown resolution and character, and no little skill, even if that one has gone the wrong side of the right-hand upright for Patrick. Still hope, Jar. still hope for Kilkenny. This has to be it. It's a goal or nothing. Owen Murphy... All the way down, caught back there by Mark Coleman. Back out as far as Tim O'Mahony. Seconds tick away, four minutes have gone. O'Mahony has lost it. It's Porrick Walsh who slips it back in again. There's still a chance here, still a chance. Oh. Mullen, oh, it's in the what back of the net. Adrian what Mullen has levelled it up. It's surely oh. now going to extra time. It's Kilkenny, 126, Cork, 29 points. Some yep. game. Draw. What a pass. What a pass. He just put it over everybody. We couldn't, we're on top of the stadium. We couldn't see he was open. But somehow they found him. And what a finish from Mullen. What a finish, the captain. 74 minutes were gone. It's uh, the final whistle here of the 70 but they're going to have to play on. Extra time is beckoning here.
the Kilkenny fans, the Kilkenny team will feel they got out of jail. And I'm sure that Dermot O'Sullivan will be feeling a little bit disappointed, quite a bit disappointed, in fact. They really were almost there in the 2021 final, Brendan. As I know, Ter, for years, playing against those boys in black and amber down there, they're never back till you're inside in the dressing room after the game, or maybe back in Turles. What a, what a finish of the game. Cork will be kicking themselves. Patrick Horgan had that last opportunity to put four points between the teams. Didn't take it. Tim O'Mahony comes out with the ball, bounces on the ground, loses possession. And then that worldly pass that gets the goal. Cork have to reset here now, Ger. And can Kenny now have a bit of momentum, but at least the Cork have a few minutes to get their team together and calm their nerves. It was some match, and it's going to continue yet again. They were level 12 times, Joanne. You just cannot get rid of them. Sure you can, Jackie Tyrrell. Ah, well, we do have nine lives, so... I... <laughs> <laughs> we definitely use one today, Joanne, but... Uh, wow, like, what a finish, what a game. Um, to be fair to Cork, the better team in the second half took over the game completely, used the ball so well, Mark Coleman orchestrated everything, they just had runners everywhere, Shane Kingston off the bench, five points, Alan Cadigan caused trouble, we'd no real answer to that, but we hung in, and we got four points in a row, Cork possibly hit a few points, and then we had the drama at the end of the Adrian Mullen goal, so it was just very hard to get your head around it it was just crazy there for the last couple of minutes Anna you thought you were there <laughs> I did I was jumping up and down here and uh, do you know what there was a small bit of worry when Kenny got four in a row points but we responded so well with that excellent Jack O'Connor point but again this is what happens Dublin came back into it Clare came back into it and Kenny you just know they never ever give up and there was a few easy wides there Sean O'Donoghue Alan Connolly and then that miss from Hoggy was so uncharacteristic Like, we're, we're back, we're back to square one again here. You say that you never write them off, and yet Jackie was talking about last year's All-Ireland semi-final. The phrase that Jackie used was, they just rolled over. Well, there were a few dodgy points in this second half, but when they needed it, three points down, clock well into the red, bang. Incredible, like, and I was about to start slagging your man again about the Munster Linz thing, but <laughs> I did say they're the outlier, like, you know. And, like, you know, it, it did look as if it was gone. Matt Coleman makes a great catch. Pops it out to Tim O'Mahony. Is he a bit casual here, John? You know, like, he's trying to keep on possession, too much. is he? He is, and bouncing off the ground there. Jamie Mack, time right up, give it up the field. And it's Parik Walsh, I think, that took, took it off him. Was it? What a yeah. vision from him to big out Mullen. And Mullen, not big time in the game. What a finish from the young hurler of the year a couple of years ago. Is there a touch of the Joe Canning about the pass? Oh, it's a brilliant ball. It's yeah. an absolutely brilliant ball. Like, it's just the, the vision. You know, another lad would have banged it in a crossbar height and hoped yeah. someone would get a touch, but he lifted his head. Once Mullen got it in his hand, you could see nothing on a goal. We, we look back to the last time that Lim or that Cork were in Croke Park in an uh, extra time situation against Limerick. Now, we remember Seamus Arnody, who came back into the, the game towards there, wobbling around, brought back on. He was barely fit. The difference the Cork bench made, though, because we saw John Myler was reticent to use his bench back then in 2018. The difference they made here in the second half. Absolutely. I mean, if ever Shane Kingston felt they had something to prove, I mean, coming on there today, like five points from play, like extraordinary. And I think for him, really difficult getting dropped, having done so well coming into it. But to me, when Alan Cadigan came on, Jack O'Connor sprung to life. And the interplay between himself and Kingston and Jack O'Connor, it was just, it was brilliant. And to me, like, they were breathing new life into Cork. Suddenly, they were doing things that they should have been doing throughout the game. It's just Kilkenny are never dead. That They're always just plugging away, getting those points. And considering that for long periods of time, I felt that TJ Reid was, wasn't playing that usual game that he does. He didn't seem to be on the ball as much, and yet they still found a way to draw level. And you're right, like 2018, we were six points up with eight minutes to go in 2018 All-Ireland semi-final. And again, like Limerick brought Probably it needed time. a goal, Enada. You oh, know, and, yeah. and, and, and it wasn't as if they weren't trying to work it. They'd load a chance. <laughs> Robbie yeah. O'Flynn's ball yeah. across the caddy and that he batted over the bar instead of under. I mean, they were trying to work the killer score. Oh, they just wouldn't were, come. Yeah. And Murphy as well. Mm. I mean, the save from Jack O'Connor touched it onto the post. What a save. And again, the other one, he wouldn't let over the point. How crucial is that now? How crucial is that? Every little thing now seems to be crucial, but there are 20 minutes still to play to decide who's going to play Limerick in the All-Ireland final. That's coming up very, very soon.
Is this the goal that helps put Kilkenny into an All-Ireland final? Well, he certainly hopes so. His son's still out in the pitch there for another 20 minutes to go against Cork. The last time Cork were in an All-Ireland semi-final, they led by six points with 10 minutes left, ended up losing to Limerick in extra time. They'll certainly be hoping that that doesn't uh, happen again here. What about mindset, though, Anna? To go from being the team that, that loses the lead versus the team who's come back from the brink of death. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, they have extra time here now, and a lot of those players wouldn't have been on the field of play when that happened in 2018. Like, there's a few young guns that are coming through there now. And like I said at the very start, it's a brand new game. It's a clean slate. It's up to them now to do the business. They do have the legs. We've talked about the blistering pace. We've talked about their fitness levels. They're going to put it to the test here now, and let's see if they can trouble Kilkenny, because you'd have to feel... Kilkenny probably can't believe their luck. They were, they were dead and buried, and, and suddenly they're back in here fighting for extra time yet again. How are you feeling about this extra time, given that Kilkenny were really dominated in that second half? Yeah, like I think the momentum is with Kilkenny. They have a bit of repair work to do. Uh, Park Welch went to midfield and Conor Fordy went back to the back. I think they'll flip that back again. I can't, for the, un for the life of me, understand how TJ Reid has not been put in full forward. Five puckouts I counted in the second half that went in on the full forward line and TJ's 60 yards from goal. So I would hope Brian would see that, put him full forward because Robert Downey has cleaned up in the second half and has gone in high. If they do that, they'll have a great chance. Plus, Div, they have a bit of form this year already, Joanne, with extra time against Wexford. And look at how good they were in extra time. And anyway, if it goes to penalties, the man with the beard here up with us is going down to hit the last one. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to that, although hopefully it'll be sorted before then, although lots of people at home might disagree. Remember, 10 minutes aside in this, and yellow cards, red cards are quashed, three substitutions as well, additional for each team. So, okay, not long now to go till it gets underway. All square, we start again. Back to Brendan and Jerry. Certainly do. It's been a, a wonderful weekend of sport. It's been a wonderful day of sport for those of us who were up at 5.30 to see the beginning of the Kenny Harrington gold medal winning bout and now here we are extra time TJ Walter and Mullen all start now in the half forward line Killian Buckley reporting for duty there along with Mossy Keown Walter Walsh trying to take it start of the first of a 10 minute period followed by another one in extra time there could be penalties as well remember to determine who goes to the final in two weeks time against Limerick Conor Delaney, I think it was, just flicked across there. Keeps away a cheap three for Patrick Horgan. It's a big one for Hoggy now. He came out just at the, before we had the toss for extra time. He stood where he missed that 65 and had a, a fresh air shot to get it over the bar in his head to clear his thoughts. We'll He's see how it works. He's a isn't he? Horgan then, to add to the 13 he got. And he's missed it. It's inside his head slightly, Jarrah had a feeling when he stood out there on that 65 and took that free in his head again, looking in. That is, but he's a, a superb free taker. He'll fix it. Paddy Deegan launching this one downfield, collected well there by Tim O'Mahony. Into the hands here of Patrick Horgan, stayed in the middle of the park, getting away from his man. Oh, the hand pass delivered in there, but only as far as Killian Buckley, and Buckley back up into the inside forwards again towards Bergen, breaking it down. Coming onto it here, there's an opportunity, it's Cody. Oh, and Cody surrounded by Cork players. The referee says play on, they do. Niall O'Leary comes out with it. Able to take it up here, looking around. There's always a consideration of where should I place this one? Never trying to hit it away. Eventually is uh, gathered in by Conor Delaney. Deegan, Porrick Walsh again now. Two Cork players are there for it. One of them is Tim O'Mahony. Down it goes. Race for possession. Again, it is Tommy Walsh over there against uh, Alan Cadigan. Goalkeeper is available. Owen Murphy. Weary players looking to avail of every possible scoring opportunity that comes their way as it drops down there. Oh, out by O'Donoghue. The man who got the goal, ready to strike, Adrian Mullen, well defended by Rob Downey again, but it comes back to Billy Ryan, it goes over the bar. I'd say it. Got a hurley on that, I'd say it, Jer. But again, that long high ball down into the square, you can see the shot, there's the flick away from Downey. Mullen had goal in his mind again, and he ran through the crowd, goalie brings off a great save, he didn't see that until 
Battle late, but he rounded well actually with the shot because he knew the goalkeeper wouldn't see it coming over the, the defender's head. So it's advantage Kilkenny, he looked dead and buried with about three or four minutes still to go of the normal time. Now, coming forward, Jack O'Connor, look at him go. They're all after him. Mm -hmm. Referees saw the foul committed there by Forrick Welch, who was yellow carded earlier on. And now the ball has been brought forward. It'll be an easier free for Patrick Horgan to take. See, we're at about the 78 or 79th minute. Jack O'Connor is moving just as fast as it was the first or fifth minute of the match, using his taste there. Cork will be trying to do that now, try to get the spaces opened up. Like they had a normal time, but to punish Kilkenny when they do will be the key. Horgan doesn't miss the second one that comes his way at the beginning of this extra time period. So he's now got 14, and it's 30 points apiece, or 127 to 30 points. New game, effectively, when you go into extra time. Owen Murphy delivering it right down through the centre towards DJ Reid. Can't take it. Instead, it is Sean O'Donoghue who can. Looking up, seeing Damien Cahalan there. Mark Coleman covered an awful lot of ground, like Thornick Walsh at the other end for Kilkenny. Cahalan, that's Damien Cahalan, his brother Connor went off with cramp a little while ago. Alan Cadigan tried to raid against two Kilkenny players, out by Thornick Walsh. And uh, the man he was looking for there was Owen Cody, two players going for the one ball. It ends up being a Cork sideline ball, which... Uh, Mark Coleman's ready to take. How well has Tommy Walsh done though inside on, on Cadigan chair? And the last five or six balls that got in there, you know, he's pushed them around the place, he's got the legs on him, and he needs to have full concentration there with the pace of Cadigan, but he's done really, really well now in the last 10, 15 minutes in there on him. Mark Coleman playing today in his 24th ever championship match. Ready to cut this one up. Nearly five minutes into the First period of extra time already. Two ten-minute periods. Gliding in there towards Harnady. Getting there ahead of James Maher. Eyeing up the target, helped out here by Kingston. Shane Kingston had a very, very good second half when he came on. And he started in similar fashion in the extra time period. He's got six for the day. His slippery character now with the taste that he has, he just turns on the afterburners, gets that extra guard he needs. Doesn't rush the shot like he did in normal time. Short puck out as far as Hugh Lawler. Carried on forward here. Difficulty there for Mossy Cone, helped out by Walsh again. Porrick Walsh lofting it in there towards James Bergen. Bergen trying to get first run on this, and into the oh. side netting, he was so unlucky. He hit the post of the chair and this had hit the, it was the post. The goalkeeper was caught slightly. Will it come out or not? And then decides to go back. Just hits the bottom end of the, of the post. Another big chance for Kilkenny. But that high raking ball that goes in there is causing a small bit of panic in the, the Cork full back line now. Cork still by one. Damien Cahalan. This time as far as Owen Cadigan. Alan Cadigan trying to steal a march this time on Tommy Walsh, the player you were talking about a moment ago, on his feet still, supported here by Kingston, raiding, and saved by the goalkeeper, Connolly had a goal in his mercy, and brilliant save by Owen Murphy, the two goalkeepers have performed heroics in this game, out it comes as far as Porrick Walsh, way field, plenty of court players there, including Rob Downey, gets there ahead of Billy Ryan, uses Patrick Collins Kilkenny drift back Damien Cahalad fires it long down towards Horgan, can't get to it it's with Hugh Lawler instead that was a brilliant piece of goalkeeping by Owen Murphy just a moment ago there nicely forward Mossy Cohn leaving it off here as far as Conor Delaney Billy Ryan can't win this, it's Rob Downey who has grown in stature through this game, but that's a short one there, and Walter Welch could be in here, it's big Walter, shouldered, stopped again on the near post, still has it, 
problems there for Cork to contend with. Rob Downey trying to get it out. It's Walter Wall still, and it's gone for a 65. <laughs> Walter's reached there down as far as the Collins Street there, and he reached to stop that from, from being passed inside. Then it's a good save here, the near post. Collins says nice and strong. No, it actually hit Coleman. He's looking the wrong way, but this is the save, Jack. Just comes out and hit his hurley. He was wide. See how oh, keeps his eye on the ball all the time. Stays wide, hits just on the hand of the hurley. The key for all goalkeepers, never take your eye off the ball, don't tilt your head sideways, watch it, watch it, and that man is just having some game. Can Kenny have produced some wonderful goalkeepers down the years? There's a problem for Mark Coleman, I think it is. Cramped, clearly a factor. 65 about to be taken. It's got to be TJ Reid to try and add to the nine points he got in the opening 70 minutes of the game. Giving himself every opportunity. Two minutes to go to the end of the opening spell of extra time. This to level it again. No problems for TJ Reid. Ten points on the day. 31-31 or 128 to 31 points. 90 seconds to go to the end of the opening spell, plus perhaps a minute of stoppage time. Mark Coleman is gingerly walking his way out. It'll be a blow for Cork if he has to go off as well. And the last time the Cork were forced to play injury time or extra time rather in an All-Ireland semi-final they had uh, lots of problems with injuries but uh, Coleman looks fresh and okay again yeah. one minute of additional time will be played when we reach the opening 10 James Jack O'Connor O'Connor breezing in he scores Jack O'Connor it's 131 to 128 with Jack O'Connor's second ever championship goal. He scored against Clare. He <laughs> scored against Tipperary. He uses his pace. He uses that brilliant shot of his. It's fired into the back of the net and Cork are ahead by three. Kilkenny looking for an immediate response now. Killian Buckley lofting it forward here. TJ Reid, the danger man inside, and TJ knocks it over the bar. It's back to a two-point game. TJ's got his 11th. Back to TJ inside again. He walks the ball down really well, but just on that last goal, Connor Delaney got skinned again by Jack O'Connor. It happened earlier, and Padraig Walsh had to pull him down. This time he got inside. There was no stopping that for Owen Murphy. Fantastic finish. Sean O'Leary Hayes has just come on for Cork. There he is, number 17. And the uh, player that uh, he is replacing is Mark Coleman. Well, he'll be a big loss. And here goes Jack O'Connor again, and there's no catching him. O'Connor looks up, then under hits this one. Easy for Owen Murphy to take. 30 seconds to go to the end of the opening period. Broken down this time by Owen Cody. Looking to try try and take possession but it's the very hard-working Sean O'Donoghue who's been exemplary in that full back line out to Tim O'Mahony playing it beautifully Owen Cadigan or rather Allen this time leaving it back and Horgan stylishly lifts it up and lifts it over the crossbar and Patrick Horgan is on 15 for the day and Cork lead 132 to 129 similar to the, first, to the end of the second half or the middle third of the second half there's holes opening up all over the place on that Kilkenny defence, but Cork have taken those couple of chances, the goal and a point. But you still have to say, Jerry, even here at this half-time interval, that Kilkenny still won't go away, that's one thing for sure. Well, at the end of the first 35 minutes, Kilkenny led by a point. That goal by Adrian Mullen in the 75th minute gave Kilkenny the chance to get into extra time. It was level, but right now Cork have opened the gap again. That goal... Jack O'Connor. Yeah, and I think it's time now, and, and Jackie touched on it there at the end of normal time, is to put TJ in the edge, edge of the square and put it in. You saw the one ball dude in there. He works it down with the hurley. He's really, really cute. And what do you expect the Cork, Cork defence to get in the last three or four minutes of this game is to get a bit jumpy. And the one guy you want inside there is TJ. So I'd expect Kilkenny at some stage here to put him in on the edge of the square to, to use his skill set in there. 
It's been an absolutely brilliant weekend of hurling. You saw the superb work we saw from Limerick yesterday. Waterford just running out of gas four weeks in a row. The two teams today serving it up for us once again. It seems like an eternity since we got the dramatic news about half three, four o'clock yesterday that a lorry load of hay had fallen over on the M7 and uh, banjaxed everything for a while. And yeah, Tipperary got to blame for that as well, Jerry Heard. <laughs> but anyway, look, as well as that, Joe, before the game, we spoke about three weeks in a row. We spoke about the heat that that court team played in below in Clare. We spoke about the game against Dublin. Now they're out, and look, they're absolutely flying. And to be fair to Kilkenny as well, the narrative before the game was Cork could just go to run through them. That simply hasn't been the case. They have taken a few blows here and there and given as good as they've got. You see Cahalan down there as well. Give it well, a few words. Let's see what the studio is thinking of things right now, Joanne. Anna, is it Corks now? hundred uh, percent. I back them from the start. I'm going to keep it going. To be honest, Kingston, that save by Owen Murphy is going to go down one of the greatest ever. But like they're pushing and they're pushing and they have a chance and they can smell blood. You can see Hoggy start to get back into it. He was a bit shaky there in the first few minutes of extra time. There's a belief in this Cork setup now and they have to kick on. There's a certain veteran player who was a player of the year in the past who's about to make his first appearance of the championship summer for Kilkenny. Yeah, the, the birthday boy, his birthday today, Richie. By God, do we ever need him now? Um, <laughs> and I'd imagine he'd win in the full forward line. No birthday presents, please. Once, once again, I'd say, like, I hope TJ Reid goes in at one stage. Brennan picked up on it as well. The one ball he wasn't there, he, he did get a score over it. And that, I think that's our best hope. Going to penalties, John. <laughs> oh, Anthony says it's not over yet. <laughs> OK, back over to Brendan Niger. So Richie Hogan is in. You may remember a goal he got in the Leinster final last year against Galway. Something similar would do nicely for the Cats. TJ on the edge of the square, Richie yeah. Hogan beside him. They've got it all to do. Only three points between them, however. Killian Buckley. Down as far as TJ Reid. Battling, working hard against Rob Downey, who's just not giving up and not giving him anything easily. It comes out as far as Richie Hogan. Locks, knocks it up into the air, it's going to drop short and eventually it drops out over the end line rather harmlessly. That's 13 wides by Kilkenny. But they still have time, they still have the opportunity. So many tired, weary, exhausted players out there. This man looks like he's got so much freshness in his legs. Jack O'Connor, the goal scorer. That's a goal and three now for him. Conor Delaney's going to have to come off him. Brian Cody's going down the line there to Conor Delaney. He should not be getting caught like that out in front of Jack O'Connor. He wins the ball in front of the Hogan stand fine, but don't let him roll you like that. Well, there have been so many great matches down the years, down the decades between Kilkenny and Cork. This is another one. A match of epic proportions. Back as far as Kingston, who's proved a point time and again. Yeah. He's got seven. Cocker kicking for home here, Jer now Kilkenny again, like we said in normal time in the second half. They're going to have to try to win a puck out somewhere. I'll tell you what, Shane Kingston will probably be hoping that they don't have to bring him on every time. He wants to start. Cork come again. Damien Cahalan takes the shoulder from Mullen. Out comes Tim O'Mahony. No Hurley. Kicks it forward towards Connolly. Paddy Deegan wins it. It's in the hands of Seamus Harnady. He's going for glory as well. He's got a second. All came from Rob Downey. Rob Downey, high puck out on top of his head with TJ. He won it. He made the statement. Cork worked it up the field, and Harnady then reached the rewards of Downey's hard work. And he knows they're getting closer. It's the second time in the match that Cork has led Kilkenny by six points. And you know what happened towards the end of the 70. Cork will have learned their lesson. Looking now to press home their advantage at every opportunity. Harnady again, dropping it in. It didn't go over the line. Owen Murphy. Nicely here held by Richie Hogan. Can't set anything up, however. Taken away by Owen Cadigan, who came in as a, a sub for Ger Mellerick earlier on. That's Sean O'Leary Hayes playing his part. Alan Cadigan. Support there available from Patrick Hogan, hitting it instinctively, but the wrong side of the post as well. Has to be content with the 15 points that he's already contributed of Cork's tally of 135. 
Cork by six. It's just a defensive structure now. See, Tim O'Man, he is trying to sit back there as best he can. Behind his own 65, look at the hedge. He's got Mullen just five yards up the pitch, man. Luke Mead coming off, and the man who was alongside him at the very beginning of the match is back on, Dara Fitzgibbon. Kilkenny's turn to go into the attack. They need something special. Can TJ produce it for them, or somebody else? It's one back. It was needed, and it's Richie Hogan on his birthday. Slowly but surely, that's one thing I will say, obviously, about Kilkenny. They'll take point for point. If a goal opportunity comes, they take one. From the puck out here over the head of Fitzgibbon, still in play. Rescued back there by Killian Buckley, shrugging off the attentions of Alan Cadigan. Delivered down by Conor Delaney. Bergen claiming it, Kilkenny claiming it, and I think the referee concurring. It's going to be a, a cat's ball. Sean O'Donoghue with a, a certain look of disbelief on his face. There's defending to do, there's six minutes to go. And it's going to be Billy in Ryan. In front of TJ there now anyway. They have it spotted, they're gone back in. TJ Ryan cutting it in, can they keep it in play and make something happen? TJ Reid won't come up for him initially, it does now. Oh, again, good piece of defending by Rob Downey. Got the stick in, that is superb work by the Glen Rovers youngster. A super work, Jared. that's match winning stuff there. Shane Kingston angling this one across, it's a perfect ball for Alan Cadigan, and that could be the perfect conclusion. There should have been a score for Kilkenny down there, there's a score for Alan Cadigan at the other end. There is this great work, you can see it here, look at that flick away from Downey. And then it results down in Cadigan getting the, the chance. Declan Dalton has come in, number 26. James Bergen racing across to try and win this. Jack O'Connor, the player, going off. It's Bergen. Can they still rescue themselves if they've done so many times in the past? They've got a free in, but they're six behind. Yeah, Bergen did really well there. He knew he'd run out of catches. He just let the ball drop to the ground and won the free. And again, there's still five or six minutes or so taken out of time into account. The Cork are certainly on a roll, Jared, there's no doubt about that. Well, by and large, they've been the better team. But they haven't been able to put the Cats away just yet. TJ Reid angling it up and over the crossbar for his 12th of the afternoon. Five between them, four minutes to go, plus maybe an extra minute of stoppage time. Tense, extremely tense. Watch your work for what Kieran Kings has done there, he's... In the number of years looking at a Cork home we ever get here, they have an opportunity now. From that wonderful long ball there towards Dara Fitzgibbon on his hands and knees, and it's won by Kilkenny, and it's Paddy Deegan who drills it back down again. Porrick Walsh, oh, in came the stick there of Harnady to win it. Kingston prodding it forward, Connolly feeding it. Here they come again, it's Tim O'Mahony. Cork running into a block then, Killian Buckley stopping their progress, out towards Adrian Mullen. Fishing around for it there was Dara Fitzgibbon, stopped in the end by Mossy Cohn and away by Conor Delaney. Kilkenny looking to try and build up some momentum, can't, stopped. Damien Cahalan fires it forward, poor ball, comes straight to Killian Buckley again. Walter Welch looking to make the impact that Kilkenny expect. The big man stopped this time by Owen Cadigan. Free to Cork. Referee might have a word. Yeah, Owen Cadigan was lining him up from a, from a long ways back there. He wasn't going to let Walter in. He comes across here. Right. He actually missed the front of his shoulder, missed his chest, and got him on the Cusick stand side of his, his body there. He's actually done damage himself as well. Well, the more Arishka was in to attend to him. He's hobbling, as you can see. Kilkenny have the free. This will bring it back to a four-point game again. Kilkenny have got an extra few yards closer to the Cork goal because Cork didn't retreat quickly enough. TJ Reid. Twelve so far. As you can see, two minutes 
of the extra time period still to go. Another one for TJ. If it's any point of view, Jerry, they just need to get this back to three points. That could be all they're thinking about down there now at the moment. Get one more point, get it back to a one-score game. They'll be looking to try and win the next puck out here from Patrick Collins. Billy Ryan goes off. Time We're hearing now there will be two additional minutes, Brendan. Good news for Kilkenny. Cork looking to try and put pay to Kilkenny's chances, however. They want to get it back into the final. This is Declan Dalton. Oh, Dalton with a huge one. And that could be a winner for Cork. Declan Dalton with his first touch up and over the bar. Five between them. And the seconds are rapidly ticking away for Kilkenny. But they've got Richie Hogan. He's got possession. Feeding it towards Walter Welch. Stopped. It's Sean O'Donoghue who's got it, trying to get that ball away. TJ comes back in again. That's John Donnelly, back in the action. Final effort there is by Adrian Mullen, and it's gone the wrong side of the upright. It's gone wide. We're talking about the bench, Terry. That was a fantastic score there from Dalton. We see the two minutes going up on the board there now. Two and a half minutes still to go. Caught by five. David O'Sullivan, I'm sure, is saying, surely be to goodness, we cannot be denied for the second time this afternoon. Brian Cody's bringing Richie Reid back on again here as well. It's a blood sub. And injury for James Maher. Reid comes back in. Is there anything they can do about it? Cork have been the more dominant. But there's still a few seconds there as Mossy Keown goes down. Tries to hand pass it. One back by Cork again by an alert Dara Fitzgibbon. And Fitzgibbon fires it in for all his worth. The wrong side of the upright uses a few seconds, two minutes remaining. Uh, five points in it there. Walter needs to get his hand on this one. Walter goes up, can't take it. And can that's Owen Cadigan. Tim O'Mahony back as far as the man who got one of their points recently. Declan Dalton has another blast, but puts it the wrong side of the post. Stays at a five-point difference. You see that's his defense get, seconds. Gives the defense a chance to get set up too on the puck out towards Richie Hogan, clever player, crafty. Lobbing it in here towards TJ Reid, some defending to do there by Rob Downey. Helped out, Fitzgibbon can't get to it, that's Richie Reid, spills around in there, TJ Reid, goalkeeper comes. Back once again towards Richie Hogan, surrounded by core players, finally rolled up onto the stick of Declan Dalton. And Dalton clears it out to Seamus Hardity. Two East Cork men. And Hardity setting sail. He was on the team that won here against Dublin in the semi-final in 2013. He looks to be on another winning semi-final. That one has gone wide. He thought it was over the bar. But there's only about 45 seconds remaining. And Walter Walsh couldn't collect that one. Instead, it's Tommy Walsh. Down. As far as the man who gave Kilkenny the chance to go to extra time, Adrian Mullen came off a stick that time, the stick of Damien Cahalan. It's gone for a 65. That's their turn. When Harney was going along the wing, the white helmet of Tim O'Man, he was absolutely charging down the middle of the field with just the athleticism and the, the, the drive and the fitness. Okay, Kilkenny now are going to drop, obviously, this one in. Owen Murphy, the taker. Spills by spill by a couple of players. The goalkeeper comes out, gets it, out to be challenged, clears it out as far as Tim O'Mahony. We're deep into extra time. Cork may have been foiled in 2018 by Limerick when it went to extra time. They're not going to be foiled this afternoon. And that is Alan Connolly up into the air. And I think Cork fans don't care where it ends up. No, they blown. just want to hear the final whistle. He's blown it up now, Jerk. It's all over. It's all over. And Cork have beaten Kilkenny in the All-Ireland semi-final in a match that required an additional 20 minutes. Joy for Kieran Kingston and his management team. The rock alongside him. He had several rocks down there.
like Rob Downey and so many more. So Cork are back in the All-Ireland final after a gap of eight years. Kilkenny and Brian Cody looked down and out. They gave it everything they possibly had. Patrick Horgan will be playing in the All-Ireland final for the second time. Denied by Clare back in 2013 after a replay. It is often said he's one of those players who would deserve an All-Ireland medal. Limerick stand in their way. Today was an epic match, Brendan. No doubt about it. It's an unbelievable game. Cork, you know, just a got their running game going, they got five or six up, but credit to Kilkenny, what an unbelievable comeback, and even there in the last two or three minutes, you couldn't be sure the Cork were going to get over the line, but they did, and deservedly now choose the All-Ireland final against Limerick, and of course Kilkenny, as they always do, dying at their shields, I see um, Owen Murphy below there in the goals, he was thrown down the goals, one exhibition of goalkeeping he gave as well today, so overall fair play to Cork, and Kilkenny did what they always do, they just wouldn't go away. The teams were levelled 14 times in all. There's a very proud Dr. Con Murphy. His congratulations to Kieran Kingston. Well, Kieran Kingston has done it. He's taken one step towards winning back the Liam McCarthy Cup. But right now, Limerick stand against him. And in two weeks' time, we will see the first ever all Monster Cork Limerick uh, Monster or All Ireland final. It'll be some game. It'll be some challenge for Cork against Limerick, who were absolutely magnificent yesterday. But some game today, some game, so many stars, so many heroes, so many warriors down there in both teams. And Cork have finally got over the line. Tough going, tough going for Richie Reid. Really tough going to lose there after that match. It's one of those games, brilliant to win, but over to lose. Final score here, it's Cork, one goal and 37 points. Kilkenny, one goal and 32. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Brendan. Half Cork with lots of those doubts to rest. Some lovely pictures there, great big smile on the face of Kieran Kingston. And there was that lovely shot of Owen Cadigan helping TJ Reid up off the ground as well. Anna, Cork, they're back. It's taken a while. 2013, the last one, and obviously it, you're looking at the big prize. First one since... And five. Yeah, Kieran Kingston said it during the week that their main objective was to get back to Croke Park, which they were there today, and then it was about getting to a final, and they got the job done. To me, that extra time, it had the heart, the determination, the tenacity that you want to see from a Cork side, and if they are to go all the way, they need to bring that. We saw Kilkenny had a few goal chances as well in that extra time, and they snuffed it out. They worked as a unit, they were intense, they were in their faces, and to me, a big thing, Joanne, was just the impact of the bench. Cork came in with 1-6 having scored off the bench, and they scored 11 points today. Kilkenny came in with 1-14, scored off the bench and scored one point from Richie Hogan, unless I'm mistaken. So to me, the impact, like, when they when they got their chance on the pitch, they made it count. And there's an energy now and an excitement about car curling. And to be honest, seeing even the, the spectators and supporters leaping out of their seats, like, that's what it's about. Like, semi-finals are there to be won. They can often be a banana skin. But Cork took their chances and you just couldn't be but thrilled for them. They're called soft in the past. They yeah. they have those memories of what happened in the All Ireland semi final three years ago. But they've they've answered that now. They have, but of course in two weeks' time, Don Logue always tell, tells us that All Ireland medals is the currency in Cork, so you have to turn up and win the final, which it won't be easy, but at the same time you have to admire so much. I mean you possibly might have felt with the late goal to bring it to the extra time that they might have folded, but sometimes the team that gets that late goal can feel we have it now. And, and Cork responded, and you know, as Anna said, the likes of Kingston, you know, Cadigan, those legs they brought into it. And like, we did call out Tim O'Mahony hopping the ball off the ground. He must have made six catches in extra time, to be fair to him. You know, Sean O'Donoghue, rock solid, Owen Cadigan. Like, there's so many heroes there, uh, Declan Dalton, even with the last point. We'd have to say Robert Downey, because we were yeah. saying get the ball into TG at the edge of the square. He came out with a few vital interceptions in that extra time. Did. Do you, as a Kilkenny man, ja Jackie Yart? You had question marks. The, you and Anthony in particular were looking from the word go at the positioning of TJ Reid. Also, we didn't see Richie Hogan come in until the second half of extra time. 
Yeah, and he, he spent all the majority of his time out the field, and it was only in, uh, uh, he, he went in the first half uh, for one ball, and he, he almost created a goal out. In the second half, they put him in. To be honest, TJ looked tired at that stage. I was, I just thought we'd push him in there in the second half to offer a bit of punch up there because there was high balls going in on top of James Berrigan and Billy Ryan. They're not going to win high ball. I thought they should put Wally to the half forward line and put TJ in. But like I, I spoke about before the game, like we had concerns when Waterford ran out as last year. When Cork ran out as again, 